think a few of you guys have like played with Sang before, but like Sang is like the nicest yeah. human being on earth and like he loves lore and yeah. the fact that he got the staff was like super awesome even though kind of controversial he turbo stole this the legendary by the way see we got the legendary legendary <laughs> Saying loot it. Uh, well, it's got his Latos has it. Tell him to give it over. I need that. Tell Scott to give me the weapon. That was close, man. I mean, it wouldn't have been close if THG didn't get. Split. <laughs> I don't think Sang can get the legendary. I think no, it man. has to be Goob, right? Nope, it's, it's mine. Sang nah, nah, nah. The new main. I accepted the quest, it's gone. <laughs> like, he, he just, <laughs> is... he legit stole it. All right, let's, uh, let's get it popping. Let's call the boys. This is extremely informal. I brought a lot of people on that I like having conversations with, and I'm just going to kind of let the conversation go wherever it should go. This is very unstructured. Hello? 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 Hello. Just waiting on the cats. I don't know if they're awake, actually. Oh no, Growl is uh is in another Discord right now. They'll probably make it. Oh, Growl's uh, leveling in Hardcore Classic. This is very important for him to not die. Wait, is that actually true? That's what he's doing in there, yeah. I mean, what's more hardcore than being on a f***ing Discord call while trying to level? True. Dude, actually... I was kind of surprised. I didn't really notice this because, like, uh, leading up to races, I'm, like, so in my own way, like, doing my own shit. I didn't realize how big Hardcore Classic was on Twitch. That shit was fucking de oh, demolishing. Yeah. That was, viewers were insane. I saw Zara, you post. He had some tweet where he had, like, 25,000 viewers. That was when I was, like, yo, I kind of sat up in my chair, like, wait, what's going on with Hardcore? Yeah, it's fucking wild man are you guys gonna do the official thing when it comes out like i feel like i'm not interested in it at all but if there's nothing else going on i might just like hop on the train and try it out who knows i could not care less about classic yeah it's actually really frustrating that i i give so little of a shit about classic <laughs> because it seems like, <laughs> it, seems like awesome. it would be really good content i just can't give any kind of a shit i'm right there with God you damn. i tried to level twice and i got to level 15 and ended in the barons multiple times but i feel like that would actually be insane hardcore classic content like you do that to the barons and then like you die because you're bored and like you like act and you're like oh my god like this is so fucking hard and then you just die and title some short like retail player gets destroyed by baron's mob or something like that would go hard and then you, and then you put the skull emoji in front of it yep death equal delete i actually put that in my title because like when drops came out i was like damn dude I live, i'm like looking on the viewer thing and i see these fucking classic dudes on my tail i'm like i gotta fucking kick this shit into high gear <laughs> and i fucking okay. i fucking put death equals delete for the fucking campaign in zerlet caverns <laughs> dude one thing i was thinking of what do you guys think of the was a scarn change uh and like how they handled that this week just don't know why they care like just let you know if the race is done in it's it's just i don't I think mean, it's I a race thing. Care. i know why they care um oh, I, th I think that it, i think it looks bad i think more than anything it just looked bad the way that people were doing it with like five tanks and four healers yeah like yeah. you were doing it on the edge for a bit and like it was like the way that we killed it it was like from five percent to zero and then it evolved with echo and method doing it like 20 percent to zero and then as like the, a week went by and then you just saw it became an abomination like it was just such a clear like okay let me give you a different let me give you a different spin on it <clears throat> we spent the last fucking season listening to people nut over no healer keys and then we <laughs> oh, do a we're raid just boss. doing this then <laughs> then we do a raid boss where you bring five healers and fucking six tanks and all of a sudden it's quote unquote an abomination the no healer keys were two percent okay of the meta. dude the they no healer keys were nothing man they were Not literally two percent they, they were they were, they were two, two of the top 200 keys and there was higher keys timed with healers yeah. in those dungeons but the problem is isn't chat was clearly the best and it was so stupid the problem isn't that the no healer keys by themselves it's that were it's an issue it's that the fact that you could do a no healer key was indicative of a much bigger problem, which was off healing was completely out of control. I, and th so like the, the keys themselves were whatever, 
but it pointed to a much deeper root problem that like healing was being trivialized because these off healing cooldowns and specifically prop paladin were just so busted if you think about this for a second though you basically got resto druid nerfed because of you wanting off you and to get nerfed it just like cycled down into nature's vigil somehow getting yeah. nerfed for resto druid so you just like indirectly fuck yourself it's still worth it okay I mean, do, do before the that, uh, blizzard shouldn't be nerfing healing checks the way they have been in the past though because like i, I think that they every single time they release like anything that's any sort of defensive or healing check Blizzard always walks back and nerfs it because, like, I, I bet the Uldaman Lizard's gonna get nerfed in the next couple of days, and that one's just like more so on your tank stunning the boss at the right time and you pressing a defensive. Kind of same with the last boss of Vortex Pinnacle. Like, I, I don't like healing checks being nerfed because to me, that's the fun part of the game as a healer is yeah. getting, you know, having that responsibility. But I will say that it's definitely an area of bias because as the healer, I am never stuck in a situation where i'm watching somebody else knowing that they are oh, yeah, solely responsible like for this for like whether or not we're going to kill this boss and so if you're the healer it's fun i could definitely see the other side of it where if i'm a dps and i just know that my healer's not good and we're about to wipe because this guy can't press his buttons right that it would be the most frustrating experience in a key mm -hmm. well isn't isn't that kind of what the healing change was supposed to fix like like before when like the health pools were lower the only way to really make it scary because of how OP healers were, were to like do burst damage. But then like only a few healers were like massively better than that than others. So like by increasing the health pools of everyone and increasing the damage, but not increasing the healing, it allows them to make somewhat challenging, like really long-term dot healing or like, you know, other enable other kind of healing profiles to still be competitive, except for, you know, preservation evokers, just having like five buttons that lay on hands your group. Right. So like, I think that was what they were trying to fix. But why do they have to keep doing that this expansion? Why are healers so OP? Like, this has never been like this before. It was like this way in Raid, too. Like, every healer is just fucking cracked. Like, why are healers so insane now and they have to constantly do this change? I actually don't know. I don't know what is... I mean, you could maybe speculate that it's something to do with, like, tier sets coming back in, in, in a big way and like maybe tuning from last expansion was just kind of off with because uh, you know that with like talent trees too they they give you access to more shit i guess that maybe you didn't ha <laughs> have all at one time and i do think they've just done a better job of balancing like all the healers you know it used to be there were some healer specs you just couldn't take into a dungeon because they sucked Bro, like, look at this raid pretty good now bro think about like the last like five races for example which like the race is like different healer breakdown usually than like uh, other guilds doing it but like it was like double priest double paladin and it was like it was like basically for like two and a half years it was like only priest paladins and shamans basically because they just all did damage while healing this raid it was like priest palad in the top three guilds you saw like full time all every single healer right except for disc like disc was really dog shit but like every other healer was brought. That's the first time that's ever happened. So yep. I, I don't know if it feels that way in Mythic Plus, though, but at least in Raid, like, Raid healer balance is, like, really fucking good. No, it's it, there is more parity right now in Mythic Plus for healers than, like, ev even for, like, Season 1. Like, Season 1 had pretty good parity after they started nerfing some of the outliers. But this season, you can... Oh, like, I, there's times when I just open up LFG to, just to look... And you, if you look at the at what keys, you know, sort by 23, 24 type stuff, scroll down the list and you'll see, you know, there'll be a Resto Druid, a Resto Shaman, a, a Disc Priest, a Holy Paladin, a, an Evoker. Like, you'll see one of every kind of healer in there, maybe not Mistweaver, but then if you look at the leaderboards, I mean, you're going to see more Resto Shamans than some other classes. But if you have to go not much past maybe like the second page before you see every healer represented at some level and that's definitely never been the case before mm, Dude, I, nobody even knows what the best healer is right now that's, 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 that's actually, that's actually, that's actually it's goaded though yeah, yeah it, it, it is calm dependent like that's that's super goaded because healers in general like something i've noticed is they're less able to multi-class well than like a lot of other roles especially in ray this is probably not true in mythic plus but like healers generally are like way better at their multi-class healers are way better at their main and like second best main than they are like their fifth best as opposed to like multi-classing melee or like tanks and i feel like 
if all healers are like it's comp dependent or if you have a player who's like a fucking super insane like shaman or druid or whatever like you can like build your comp around knowing that person is doing what they're best at which is like that's that has to be the best version of what this game can be a mythic plus right like that you can make decisions like that i think it's the only way <clears throat> you'll ever have true diversity in the game is to just make different things valuable based on what else you have in the group so the question of like do you bring like a resto druid is not necessarily just like how good is resto druid it's well what else would do we have mark of the wild in our comp already and if the answer is yes then we probably want to bring something besides a druid and if no then druid is going to look really attractive same deal with the lust healers do we have lust like that's probably the first question you asked. Do we have lust yeah. in this comp? Then, if the answer is no, you're bringing either a, a shaman or an evoker. If the answer is yes, then you probably move down to like, do we have mark of the wild? If the answer is no, probably leaning strongly towards a druid. Well, if the answer is yes, we're looking at priest, and you just kind of go down that checklist, and it makes different things valuable based on the other things you're bringing. Isn't that? I think. Uh, go ahead, tell us. I think the talent tree rework actually did a really good job for. DPS specifically balancing too, because like it allowed a lot of DPS to have decent like AOE options, whereas before some specs, for whatever reason, just like could not do good AOE. <laughs> and now like you have a lot of more DPS options too, and that I think also factors into comp diversity a bit. So I actually for, from the healer front, I have a interesting thought that I I kind of just came up with after listening to you. You know how like how despised at the top level raid buffs are in raid, like like uh like you yeah. know Mark of the Wild things like that. Like it's like like 10, 11, 12 people in your comp are like already determined by just randomly having raid buffs, and like three classes don't have them or whatever. I feel like in Mythic Plus, group buffs are actually like super fucking interesting because it actually just it 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 builds that entire thought process you just made. If there's no Mark of the Wild, there is no thought process like you just had, right? It would just be basing it based off other things like utility and shit like that. Well, yeah, yeah, there's there's few enough people or few few enough players in a group in Mythic Plus that you actually have to, you have to pick. Like you have that you're going to be missing some buffs. So the question is, which ones do you want to bring? That's more interesting than how do we bring you know for sure all of the raid buffs that we're going to bring, which locks in the classes. And then instead, in raid, it becomes what are the other you know twelve things we're going to bring after we have our buffs covered. Um, whereas in, in keys, it starts with what buffs do we want to bring? And then you bring those things. This all kind of started because I was asking about like the Skarn thing. And I do like that we're kind of going in all directions. But I do I do kind of want to focus on that for a minute. Because I think it's like really, really controversial. I can't think of something happening like this before. JB came in hot with the fucking somehow. Somehow you pivoted to fucking four healing keys within like 10 seconds of the <laughs> of the call and nothing was about that at all yeah but honestly i never even thought that, that was impressive yeah. that was i had really never impressive. even thought about that until i heard you say oh we brought uh, you know however many tanks however many healers and i was like god damn that sounds familiar and last time i heard that come out of somebody's <laughs> mouth they thought it was like really cool that you weren't bringing any healers it is and cool. now all of a sudden when it's the flip of that and we're bringing oh, it's disgusting that we're bringing so many healers it's an abomination and it's an abomination. Okay, well, okay. I will say that the way that Skarn was being killed in the last five days before this change was an abomination. That 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 is that is irredeemable garbage, right? Um, so they were. I actually don't know if there's a boss in history that you could compare this to. Where uh, like we we talked about this before the raid. Skarn had so much potential as a fight. It was like it looked kind of like Painsmith. It was like super strategic and like where you put things. And then it kind of just had this. It ended up being cool in the race, but it was like a slight blemish because of the wall thing. And then that blemish just became the entire fight. And they've never really ran into that before where a small thing like that could just end up like kind of fucking over the whole fight. And they made huge changes. Actually, the buffs were bigger or nerfs were bigger. Isn't it a 25% mm -hmm. yeah. health nerf, which is like people are reading about that. I, I actually got a little bit more context from my stream today because I wasn't sure why, because I know 25%, like, if we go pull Skarn and just do the same strat we've always done, because we never did the wall thing with 25% less health, that boss is going to die, like, two minutes faster and do literally nothing before it dies. Like, it's going to be easy as fuck. But What's uh, the only comparisons? Like, Ilganoth, right? Ilganoth, Emerald Nightmare? Or, or no, no, no oh, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cheese Ilganoth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the Nightwolf one. Well, did they, did they change anything? No, they didn't change They it, just let oh, you do that. A, yeah, they just let you do it. Mm. There was, what, what was the, um... Was it twin Valkyries in Trial of the Grand Crusader? And they had there were orbs oh, that would like bounce that? around the room. Yeah, sorry, we're we're going wow, deep in the is... in the bag right now. 
So there was, uh, I think it was, tw it was the, like second to last boss in there, and there were orbs that bounced around the room, but there was a doorway, and you could just like stand in the, the tanks, I think, could like stand in the doorway, um, and then the raid would stand like behind the, the two bosses, and you could just, everybody could stack on that point and, and do the fight, and you didn't have to dodge anything, and it completely trivialized the fight. If I remember correctly, yeah, that's it's like ancient while. times, though. Like I, I, I don't like as far as like. But it was very similar. Is it is, yeah, it's similar in that you could just like fully cheese it. Yeah, the, but I noticed here's why a lot of people are mad. Uh, so right now the Hall of Fame, let me double check, has 24 guilds in it. Uh, maybe some have killed it in the last hour since I opened this. Uh, 24 guilds and 250 guilds have killed Scarn, and they killed it using the cheese strat. Oh yeah, they're all extending, and and all of them are extending because of how the gear upgrade system works as patch. Which let's not like transition to that. I'm sure we could spit a full thirty minutes about the gear upgrade thing, but now people are like, Hall of Fame is kind of fucked because they didn't nerf it on a reset. They nerfed it like midweek. So if you yeah, were that was weird. if you were raiding on Monday or something, you know, you just kind of got fucked if you as opposed to if you were raiding Thursday or something, and that. And that means that, like, now you have to spend a couple of days progressing this or maybe a week if you only raid two or three days a week. And other guilds just kind of got by it for free and never really have to relearn it. And that I understand a lot of the uh, that that's where I'm I think a lot of the animosity is coming from that direction because people just feel like they got fucked over. Yeah, our guild killed it two days ago and we're going straight to the last boss at this point. And so yeah, my my ahead. biggest complaint is that my guild tried to do it the easy way and we failed at it and I have to live with that failure the rest of my life. <laughs> like people ask me now, did you, are you on Zaskar? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, so you like cheesed it and killed it? And I'm like, no, we weren't good enough to do it. And they nerfed it the night after. So now I just have to sit oh with that for the God. rest of my life, knowing we weren't good enough to kill the cheese is a Karn strat and now we now we have to do it for real and I'll just be bitter the entire time. Yeah, I also feel like the I'm just doing math based on like when we killed it and how we killed it and when we reached that point. I think the main p reason people are okay, there's two things about the boss. Number one, there was one line at the end they never should have typed and it's the, the tactical destruction is now no longer baited on the boss, but it's baited on players. Yeah. That that is the only problem. Because that makes people literally have to relearn positioning for the fight as it was normally. Like, if they didn't make that change, people could just run our strat and then kill the boss before the rube is even sketchy at all. Like, it's, the boss is way fucking easier. I think this is kind of an issue of, like, usually on really strategy-based bosses like this, people take their strats from guilds who are making the strategies for this. And then it's like you you just follow the strat and it's easy. Like, live them, right? That's kind of what Skarn is. But, like, we haven't, no one's been able to re-clear this who would be able to, like, I, maybe I'm, like, talking on my ass, but I feel like this boss is going to get actually one-banged. Like, just fucking sent into the fucking Shadow Realm. You don't need a three-tank now, because the bomb spawn next to the boss. It has 25% less health. The HP is, that thing just, I don't know if you watched a VOD of it. It's, it's going to die in four minutes. It's it's going to yeah. it's gonna instantly die. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's not that bad, and it's, like, there's a little bit of overreaction, but I definitely understand people being very emotional about it, because you do feel like you're just being left behind, kind of. It's, it's really the middle-of-the-week nerve right that's that's so weird i don't know if they've ever done that i just need them to make the the world first guilds do zaskarn again so that i can steal that strat that's the most annoying part of this is we're gonna have to either steal strats from like a world 50th guild or we're gonna have to make them on our own and neither of those are good propositions well we're just so gonna like, do the same thing that we've always we're literally just gonna do the same strat that we did on progression the same thing, except the melee probably just have to actually make sure you're on the right side of the room with the boss in the middle. So it baits on the biggest clump and you have your range spread out and the fight's exactly the same. I think I mean, I have to try it. It's possible. It's like more weird than that, but that that should work. I, I think that's so. why they brought it up to 25 percent is because like now, you know, you can kill it. 15 percent's sure real. Like if you yeah. remember watching our our kill, like going from 25 to 15 percent on our kill was fucking wild like you were talking yeah. like people were making like sensational fucking improvised plays and shit like like there was no reason to have to do all that but at 25 percent, nothing had happened at that point so it's 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 a lot but yeah this is actually probably a good time to segue into this so the gearing system this patch pretty polarizing so far it's kind of like unrelatable to anything we have seen so far in gearing like you said people are extending from like halfway through the raid because like you only need heroic gear and then you just spend flight stones and crafts and upgrading it i know a lot of people in here mythic plus a fair amount i know that especially pure mythic plus players seem to be the people that are the most happy with 
having a lot of gear, which thus is making the raid easier. Uh, they're also shorter fights too. Uh, and then also just being able to kind of start pushing high keys like right away and not having to wait like a month and a half or so. So like, I just kind of want to give you guys some space to talk about what you feel about the upgrade system this patch. And then if we want to talk into like, you know, is it too good or could it be better or whatever, what could be improved? We can get into that as well. I've got a whole spiel, right, so if somebody wants to go it. first. Yeah, thanks. someone someone give a little buffer before JB fucking tears the walls down. Oh, shit. What does JB have to say? Oh, no. <laughs> it's probably something to do with, like, healers and how they don't get loot anyways. So uh, the upgrading doesn't even matter, and healing and loot isn't actually easy to get. And, and JB's never getting the Neltharian trinket, and Rashox never drops for him, and something, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like if that's you and you're mad about that stuff in other patches, this is the patch that is the best for that, right? Because if you're a Mythic Plus player and you need that trinket, you can get that bitch on normal and upgrade it to like a respectable eye level, you know? Like if you no, have no, been- no, normal's being funneled. If you have been DPS. raiding a verse in the past and you are, I just want a Mythic Plus and play my game, like respect, right? But that, this patch has to be the least bullshit for you, right? Oh yeah, okay. this, this patch is great. Are so, yeah, so okay. I think this is an amazingly good system and there's a few reasons for this. The first is, I think this is, there's a lot of people that have complained um, since, uh, I'll say maybe since the beginning of Shadowlands is where we've had sort of the modern era of raid and mythic plus loot like distribution. Like they've kind of hit that level where you've got the valor cap and you've got the, the different eye levels in the raid. And I feel like they've kind of settled into a, into how they want the eye level to look across different um, difficulties of Raid and Mythic Plus. And there's been a, a common refrain that heroic and, and under gear from Raid feels pointless um, prior mm -hmm. to this season. That's Because true. you could level up Valor and it was higher or equivalent, whatever, to like heroic gear. And so people were like, why, you know, why the hell am I raiding? Like, there, I could just go do Mythic Plus for a week and I have all my heroic gear from Raid. There's no point. So... I think this system is great because it makes normal and heroic raid feel useful for like getting things. Even if you are a mythic raider, like heroic and normal still feels useful and you can go get your best trinket and you can get it close ish to what you would get from mythic. And so it, it makes all forms of content have meaningful upgrades and gear that you can that you can get and so i think every, no matter what you're doing in pve endgame right now you feel like it's useful like you're getting useful gear then to even the firelands yeah even firelands now they came fire in and lands, that, yeah but <laughs> yeah that was probably good to nerf that because the socketed trinkets or whatever was dude pretty stupid i got socketed hands i mean <laughs> jb this is not a super hot take what you're saying right now is pretty objectively true. yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 but okay great. so it goes further, and I'll say the because oh, I, yeah, I don't necessarily think that that part is is controversial. However, I do feel like people would argue if there's if there's a thing that I think people dislike about this season, it's that they feel that they're gearing up too quickly, and that mm. the upgrades are coming too fast, and there's nothing left to play for after like week two. You, you're so close to to your max eye level that you don't feel that you know, mm -hmm. dopamine Va vaults rush. are dead and shit. Like vaults are already like turbo useless. Right. Yeah. So what I'll say is I believe that in WoW, there's only two states of gear. There's either BIS or there's not BIS. And when you have the gear that you have coming out of, you know, from like uh, upgrading with your crests and whatnot, if you get to 441, it's still not BIS. And there's still something to, to get from that point. There's still an item that is an upgrade for you. I, and I don't think you're going to get Bis really any faster this season than you did last season. You're still going to be, you know, a lot of Bis is crafted gear. You're still gated by sparks. A lot of Bis is from Mythic Plus that's going to be waiting on vaults for the 447 version of it to drop. A lot of Bis comes from the last few bosses. You're going to have to kill those guys a few times before the things drop and everyone in the raid is given their items. So I don't think you're going to achieve Bis meaningfully faster this season than you did last season. And I mean, mm. you can split hairs as to what like how fast you okay, should. Okay, there's definitely a difference between, like you're saying like there's no, it's like either bis or not bis and like technically we're not gonna be bis because you're waiting on crafted items, but like there is a massive difference between being like 441 plus on like every character and being able to like do shit right away. Like that's a huge difference, right? Yeah, there is, there is a difference, but I would argue that this is the better difference. Like you're still not Oh yeah, bis. for sure. You still have things to, to like 
to you know on your on your list of things you want to earn there's still plenty of things you can get the upgrades aren't huge but there's that's a that's a coin with two sides because in order for you to have gear upgrades that are still like really exciting that means that your gear has to be dog shit before you get that upgrade and that feels really bad uh so when you say like, oh, it's there's no rush left at the end of the of the season for me to get these big upgrades, it means that you're taking away that beginning part of the season. Like, dude, it was I, I honestly like depressing last season when I kept opening vault after vault after vault and I didn't have an icon. And I knew so it wasn't true. gonna drop in raid. Yeah, and that I was knew even shit. if it did drop in raid, was, I wasn't gonna was get it. And so like they did buff very rare loot a lot also, but yeah, that that they yes. buffed the drop rate of it, but yeah, that, that was an awful, awful feeling. Yeah, and so saying? knowing that I can have that shit early on in the season, even if I get it from normal, I can upgrade it to the point where it's like useful. Um, like if I got a normal icon last season, let's say I did the degenerate shit where I went and farmed normal raids every every week and I got an icon, it doesn't make it a good trinket because its eye level was so bad that I'm still not going to use it. But now if I go get one of those trinkets from normal or heroic, that's usable and good. And I don't have to sit around all season being like, oh my God, I uh, this is the worst thing ever. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's good, but there the one of the flip sides is that if your gear is so close to Biss, even if I agree it's like not actually Biss and you're waiting on 447s from Vault and from Grafted to be full Biss, if you're like 98% of the way there, it doesn't give you anywhere to go upwards, which is a problem for Mythic Progression if you're not really, like if you're not really optimized and you're working on Rashok right now, and you're wiping at like 10%, there's no help on the way, right? Like you're not getting powerful next week. Next and they're week, unlikely to nerf them as well. Item, right? I... like the, the, the encounters, if you power it up super yeah. fast with this patch, you there's not the week three, week four, week five kind of moderate power jumps that we got in previous patches, which I do think is going to be a problem for like lower end cutting edge guilds that are going to be working on these encounters that were quote unquote easy for the race world first and for top 100 guilds, but you know, are not going to be at all easy for if you don't, if you can't kill it with the 441 gear, you're well, not hold getting on. much so better. Would you, would you just not argue that like that guild is just not good enough for the fight or the fight's just you, too You would hard? definitely argue that. Yeah. You could. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you so could argue yeah, that. I don't know. Because problems. like there's a difference I, I between have... world first guilds and other people, but like you're talking, yeah. you're, you're talking 10 plus eye levels from every single kill this badge. If you cannot kill a boss that was killed world first, with 10 eye levels higher than like it's and you literally can't do it like you're saying which most people could it would just take longer right like that would that's definitely like a you're probably in the wrong difficulty kind of thing i think dratness i think dratness's yeah. issue that he's talking about actually makes sense but a, a a different one that i have is like the fact that all of the mythic loot at 441 item level is basically just dead i think that i have a problem with that and i think that the, the my issue with that is like the upgrade track I think went too high. Okay, but I to don't be think fair, it, it's always been like that though. I don't think that's like. I mean, exclusive. I think it could have gone to four thirty seven, right? And it's probably fine, because the alternative mm -hmm. is what we get gear to we got gear to four forty one too fast. Well, I mean, okay, so this is actually I kind of wanted to bring this up. So there's there's two levels to this. So let's talk about the two major extremes. People have listened to my stream. I've I've made this argument a couple times, but like the the biggest extreme, right? Is so this has never happened before? But like it's like the whole season. And you basically never get anything you want. Your character always sucks, and you're always constantly looking for every piece of gear. Some people might actually be like, you know what? That does feel like some kind of season. So maybe it does, that especially especially as a healer. And then there's the other side, and this is like the Diablo three season like feeling, where if you guys have played a Diablo three season, you like play it all weekend, you slam it with your friends, and the dopamine from getting loot is just like constant, and you just fucking that feeling is amazing. And then you get to like really, really, you have your set, you have everything you want. And then you're basically playing and then you notice that you're like playing for five or six hours and you're only looking for like minor upgrades, like better statted things or primal agents and stuff. And you'll notice like that dopamine starts coming in slower and then everyone quits after like three days. That's like the Diablo three thing. So, well, okay, but I mean, so, those are completely different players though. Cause like you can talk about like, complete, I feel like in WoW, it's definitely a lot less of that. There are a lot more people who just want to play the game for the game not but yeah not the there, there is there like, is yeah diablo is a, is a game about getting loot but i think there are a lot of people who play wow and part of what drives them to play wow is that obtaining of loot but the what yeah, i want sure, but i think it's I, a lot less than what is sure diablo. but what i wanted to phrase is this those are the two extremes of you spend all patch you never get anything you want and then the other extreme is you log in day one and you are literally best in slot you have every single item you could possibly get from the raid full tertiary sockets from from the whole patch, sorry, dungeons, everything. You have every single piece. It is impossible for you to play the game and ever get an upgrade from what you are doing. 
now that's also probably a worse version of the game than what we have now, right? Some people maybe disagree. Some people are just like, you know what? Let me log in for two weeks with BIS, farm as many keys as I can, and then stop. But the thing is, is people would actually play the patch a lot less, and they would probably not have as much fun. So, so the thing is, is like, where is the line in the in the middle? Like right now, the way they have first implemented the system, and they have said pretty much that they're bringing it back, right? And that they're going to like iterate on it and stuff. Like, where is that line in between those two extremes? Is it right now too close to the getting gear too fast thing? Is a little bit slower good? Is it perfectly fine where it is, is what I would ask. I mean, the I way I see it is, we've been asking for Valor Uncap and uh, Week 1 Catalyst for like the longest time, and at this point, like, we're almost just backpedaling from that. I have not I mean, heard a actually... lot of people being upset with, with yeah, how much I... gear you got this patch. Yeah. I, I don't think, like, I think that, especially like us, right? Like, we we are people that like play on tournament realm sometimes right and are like people that enjoy that right like so so us are probably people that are going to be pretty happy with a, a powerful upgrade system but i do think there is room for blizzard to make this one worse and for us to still have a really good time right like if they if, if there are some slight nerfs that aren't to the wrong parts of the system i think the game will still be fantastic right like if we're full build week three or four instead of week two i think we're still as opposed happy. to like week fucking yeah. forever right like and, <laughs> yeah and, 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 like, and that's whereas you look at last patch and it was you know it was an icon diurna ring aranog ring simulator for the whole patch yeah the very rare loot last patch was definitely yeah. its own shit but i also think there are a few fundamental issues with with the thing right now so like there's two parts of the game where the reward structure doesn't really make sense for the time you put in uh number one it's when you're trying to farm the most needed crest which is like the ones you get from 11s it's not like time efficient to run the 16 plus one because the breaking down system isn't like as worth it as just spamming 11s, right? So like, I think that's part of the system that I've noticed now coming back in a few weeks late where it's like, if I want to get caught up and get all my crests, I just have to spam 11s for like two days. Yeah. And I would rather like, it should make, it makes more sense to me that even if I want the 11 crests, I should be able to do 17s to 20s quickly and that should net me more of that token because I'm doing a harder thing. So I think that's an issue. And then also, I and, and again, this can be discussed. I actually want to hear your all's take on this. The actual gear dropping from Mythic has never mattered less. But there are a lot of people in the game who are fine with that. Because Mythic is kind of like a passion thing. Like, you do Mythic rating if you like it. And, like, you can kind of get the same items from Heroic. It's a 3 eye level. So if you want, like, pure Biss, you will have to do Mythic rate because it's, like, a couple eye levels higher. There's anything in there. But... Like, it's close enough to where, like, people can play the game and feel good about it. So let me pose a question before that gets answered. How do, how do people feel about completely uncapped Mythic Plus uh, amount of loot that you get per week? Do we think that the amount that you get for Mythic Plus is okay? Yes. Like, end of dungeon? Yes. Or it, what it is right now. It has to be yeah. fine, right? It's, yes. it's, it's certainly not too much. Is that if, what? If they are picking some way to nerf the system and they picked the amount of loot you could get per week from M Plus, I would be so They should mad. up the gear, if that's the yeah. case. Like, if they should up... How much gear you can get and buy them all of it. Dude, Tettles, what were you just cooking? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I've, I've, I've seen some people... <laughs> well, I mean, I, some I can people, see what he's saying. I've seen like, some people like, say that, like, the amount of loot that you get from Mythic Raid is too low and the amount of uh, loot that you get from Mythic Plus is too high. Yeah, because, like, you're I just mean, spamming I, I mean, but these are people who are, like, serially grinding them. Plus. These are... Like, you these guys are... literally be fucking playing 20 keys a week. Yeah. And I, yeah. Not, like I know, I know of a complete opposite, and I hear all the time people saying, like, oh, I've already done, like, 10 plus dungeons and I haven't gotten jack shit. And I bet a lot of people can resonate with that. But, yeah. like, obviously the reverse end is if someone who just plays like, keys all day every day will get shit ton of loot. I think loot distribution's in a good spot right now in terms of being able to... I mean, for so long as Blizzard wants to keep Mythic Plus and, and Raid as, like, sort of different things, which is what they seem to want to do. Like, Mythic Plus is what you farm and Raid is where you get the singular best upgrades. Then I think the system is sort of working as intended. And then how do you guys feel like that impacts raids? Like, obviously, if you guys watched uh, the race this time or the amount of people clearing raids, they tried to make bosses much shorter this patch, which I am personally a fan of. Like, I just think basically any really challenging eight, nine minute boss is just way better than a 12 or 13 minute boss because most of those bosses are just hard for the wrong reasons. Um, but so there were shorter bosses and then the raid is like technically easier because you are just fighting the raid at a higher eye level because of the upgrade system that also is going to result in a lot less like constant nerfs throughout a patch because there's just not as much of a need for it they don't have to you know tune it for one thing and then have it be true for another thing later so i guess my only question would be like do you guys think the current mythic raid difficulty 
is good for the whole of World of Warcraft, being that it is like slightly nerfed in difficulty because of gear acquisition. Oh, absolutely, because well, I don't see this raid having to require nerfs by, you know, like two months in. I don't know. Do you guys think like they'll nerf this raid two months in? Oh yeah. I feel like if they don't, that's I, gonna yeah, be they're gonna I nerf that's Volcanic Heart. That's that yeah. Volcanic Heart needs to get nerfed really, and the, I don't, I don't think Sarkareth needs to be nerfed at all. Uh, Rashok wave damage, I would maybe expect to get a get hit a little bit. Mm, yeah. One I mean, thing I like about the 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 loot system right now in being able to gear up quickly is I feel like it gives Blizzard a better starting point for their tuning. If you know that gear up upgrades are going to be plentiful and fast, then Blizzard doesn't have to play this game where they're like, "All right, I think the world first skills are going to start these bosses at like 432 eye level, so we need to tune for like that and then be prepared for them to get to Sarkareth with like 439, but then we're not going to see average raiders get there until like closer to 443 eye level, and if you just know that everyone's going to hit 441 real fast, then I feel like you can make fights like Rashok where the, most of the difficulty is just numbers and interestingly stuff. enough that's not quite true so like it is in like the world first race it's like rashok is going to die like instantly if it's killable and then it's going to take a while if it isn't but i actually think rashok rashok is like a perfect raid boss by the way but like it, it like requires a lot mechanically of lesser coordinated guilds for sure like you'll see you'll see guilds spend a lot of time on rashok just getting hit by lava waves which is why Tettle said that they'll probably nerf the upfront damage of that um but <laughs> yeah. but but you're you're right that so basically, like, this has been my take for a while. Most most people's take uh, is, like, typically the race is actually at its best when Blizzard is not designing for it. And, like, them ignoring the race and it just existing on top of what is better for the rest of the game is good. And I think just keeping the raid difficulty like this because of the upgrade system being the way it is, because that's, like, the root of this conversation, right? Like, that that is overall better for the game, even if it means that the top couple guilds are probably just going to fucking smash these bosses, right? Side note, the tier system with the Omni token and whatnot, plus Master Loot being back, that shit owns. With the AOTC token and everything, that is some good shit for being able to acquire tier. Yeah. Uh, wait, what is? The AOTC token and the Omni tokens off of Sarkareth, the and just yeah. like all of that, the acquisition process of tier is so good. This. this I was season. talking to him before the raid came out because like he had this weird situation where like. Uh, the person who was, like, working with him in that department mainly was, like, uh, gone for a while for, like, very normal reasons. And then he went on vacation. And, like, the thing he said right before he went on vacation was, like, dude, I hope this loot isn't too much this patch. Because, like, he did the three Omni tokens. Like, the last boss with 30 people drops nine items, including the Omni tokens, right? Like, it's a crazy <laughs> difference. And then, like, the the Mythic Plus, giving everyone one free piece of Heroic tier, that's a slam dunk. But the Omni tokens were, like, considered to be maybe, like, a little bit too extra. But I think it's generally been, like, really liked... People like yeah, the, the tier switch is up. The best, best part of it. I, I, I feel like the tier even is something where if they like took a little bit of eye levels back into Mythic Raid and then gave tier to M plus, I feel like that would be a fair, a fair swap at this point. Because I, I do still feel like now, now with tier being so free from the raid, I don't know. I it, like, but it's still so important to get it. How are Mythic That's clusters just... feeling about tier acquisition? So, so that's the thing about tier is like I don't care nearly as much about eye level on tier. As much as it just getting yeah. the, the set. And that's what's been so frustrating about, especially healer gears, is that the tier was hard enough to get in, in previous tiers that you would just not get your fucking set bonus for like weeks. And it's one thing to be like, oh man, I have normal tier. And, you know, you, like the eye level's bad, but you still have the set bonus. It's entirely different when you just literally don't have the set bonus for the first like three or four resets. Of, of of a mythic clear and that that feels so bad your class is playing like you know it's not supposed to play like you know you're you're supposed to be pressing different buttons when you get your tier but you're not able to yet and What's your like problem? that yeah and so <laughs> them you know if they want to throw a bunch of like low level tier and then it takes a while for you to level it up i think i'm okay with that but i felt like the uh the acquisition rate of tier in general not necessarily like good tier sets but just in general, it should th that should not be a gated thing. They should get you access to that as quickly as possible. But she yeah. was so cringe on Sepulchre. Like if you were a, a bloody cave that didn't have your tier set until like literally Useless. week eight, yeah, you were yeah you were you were not playing the game. There was a you few sets like mode. that 
in season one of Dragonflight, but like not many. But now that they're making tier like a little bit more impactful, that it's just going to feel bad to not have it. But I guess that kind of frames the question, right? Like Blizzard, we've been talking about the Catalyst release date for uh, like two major patches now uh, before this patch. Um, and it was around eight weeks after the thing comes out or six or something like that. And then people would say, oh, well, you know, we're not getting tier. It's actually an acquisition system. It's not a catch-up system. Blizzard is hard fast into this is a catch-up system only. We are going to buff tier in other ways. But I I'm just going to ask you guys, we have a lot of gear right now, but tier is kind of one thing. Do you guys, when does the catalyst come out? Anyone know the date? June 13th. Uh, yeah, June 13th. June 13th. So is that two and a half weeks from now? Yeah. Two and a half weeks from now? Okay. Do you guys think that is right on time, too early, or too late? Okay. Here's the thing. If you raid, it. the problem is if you raid, it doesn't matter. If you Mythic Plus, it's too late by yeah. a lot still. Okay. It then is only do Mythic weeks plus. too late. Uh, I mean, okay. So I, th I think the issue for me is like they're pitched as class set bonuses, and this impacts both PvP and Mythic Plus. And but the only acquisition you can get from them is via raid. It's like that's I think that that's well a, they did a so they there. buffed the vault tier uh drop rate from season three to like season one of Dragonflight by a fuckload. Like I know like they said their stats for like people who had tier bonuses by the time cattles come out in season one of Dragonflight was way higher than season three just because of that, basically. But it does still beg the question of like tier affects everyone in the game equally. PvP, Mythic Plus, and Raid. The fact that you guys said raiders feel like the catalyst can wait and mythic plusers don't, then like something is wrong, right? Like the, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've also felt too that like the catalyst is a good enough system on its own, even sometimes in the form of reforging, like just being able to reforge certain items. And it's just an awesome system in the game. And a lot of people play WoW as tourists, even like world first raider people. Like you like clear the raid and then like you play for two months and you kind of just like raid log. And like, so the catalyst is actually missing so much of the seasonal WoW player base by coming out when it, uh, when it does. So I, I, I still feel like it, it could be a few weeks before when it is now. Yeah, I think it should launch concurrently. It's weird. I mean, if they want to change the way it works a bit, I you know, maybe I'm okay with that. Uh, if they feel like it, it is just too much of the, the gear hose. But like they, there's like, you know, week one I open my vault, there's a good there's a good piece that's a that's a tier that's on a tier slot but is not tier. And I'm I'm staring at it and I'm like, I would like to take that. I don't really want to sit with that thing in my bags for six weeks. Like that, that is a terrible feeling in my first vault to have a piece that's not tier that you could eventually make tier, but, but to know that I'm just gonna have yeah. to stare at it for well, a month. What's and the half. worst case scenario? Like think about actual worst case scenario. Let's just think right now, this patch came out and catalyst came out the first week the raid came out and, and you get one thing per week that you can catalyze. There's that just isn't bad for the game, right? Like if yeah, you're I mean, all, the good the the downside is like oh this player who might have tried raiding and liked it wouldn't have maybe but like i don't know i feel like the really? raid is still pretty exciting and like you get your four piece week one instead of week four like that's still good enough to bring a lot of m plusers into raid if they're willing to do it and then for the people that like really don't want to raid they shouldn't have to i don't know i mean blizzard's like, whole thing this patch is hey you're getting showered with loot now and everyone is like we love this so like i don't know it's kind of like getting loot fast isn't a bad thing and also for mythic plusers i'm actually interested in how you guys feel about this the raid race happens right away like raiding is relevant for like a week or two and then it's not right but mythic plus and pvp are done by the end of the season that's a little bit different now right like i feel like the highest keys are going to be timed way faster this patch than they have well, there's a completely different issue right now with m plus but we can talk about it later well, okay. Well, I mean, okay. we also have a we also have a TGP this season too at some point, right? So I think the highest level keys are going to be done by the TGP season. Well, there's also like the like getting to full bis and full avoidance and full crafted pieces and stuff is definitely still like a I think a that, time uh, gate for the highest M plus keys, right? Yeah, I mean, you you could definitely start pushing earlier than this season than you would in previous seasons. That is that is almost certainly true, though. Oh well, yeah, we actually wait. We can kind of pivot into Mythic Plus a little bit later because I think there's a lot of topics there. By the way, there was a thing that you brought up earlier um, about not being able to convert Mythic Crest to Heroic Crests. Like, that, mm -hmm. that's an annoying thing. I know there's a lot of people that have been complaining because you're forced to do, like, your 11 to 15 keys to try to farm Heroic Crests and whatnot. And to that point, I've seen a lot of people try to come up with a with other ways that you could, oh, we could do conversion of, of Crests, you know, make it easier. Or like, once you've capped out Mythic Crest, then Heroic Crest drop instead. To me, this is such a simple thing to solve because they already did it with crafted gear, which is if you're going to make a mythic piece, 
you just don't need heroic crests. I don't know why the fuck there is a requirement to put heroic crests into a piece that you are ultimately going to upgrade to mythic if you like one, if you just upgrade it all at once. If you take your belt and you're like, I'm going to upgrade it to 441, it should not require any heroic crests. Just yeah. like it doesn't require any heroic crests to craft a mythic belt. And if you did that, nobody gives a shit anymore about having to farm heroic crests unless you want to upgrade something to the heroic eye level. Then, then there's no more headache about any of it. It's all solved. And they've already come up with this system in crafting. Good point. I don't know why it doesn't exist in upgrading gear. Well, it, yeah, the, the reason why it's hard to picture it, I see some people in chat that like don't quite understand what he's saying. Because like, you're like, okay, well, like, how does that make sense? Because you, you'll get fucked if, let's say, instead of going straight to 441, you upgrade it to like 431 or whatever. And like then you do that later. It's not going to give you those crests back. It's more like if you're going from 420 to 441, if it would normally cost you like four of the whatever crest and four of the other it would just charge you six of the bigger one like it, you wouldn't actually need but that's like just lump lump sum upgrading i imagine that would be kind of hard to make though but i mean that the the concept makes sense well i mean in in myth in the uh, crafting of of gear you're told explicitly like do not craft the intermediate piece yeah. because it's a waste of heroic crest it would be the same thing in this case do not upgrade your gear from four you know like 420 something to you know 434 just wait until you have all of the mythic crests that you need, and then in one shot you go to 441, and you never have to get the heroic crests. Downside is what, like week one, you, you're optimizing for, you're optimizing the gear that you upgrade to 441 versus 437. You get, you get like your full suite. I mean, you could still go farm heroic crests if you if there's some breakpoint that, like you you know you're like, oh well, there's some piece that I can't fully upgrade, and I I don't want to wait, so I'll yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. farm a few heroic crests for that one piece i do think the case of like a new character that i make now kind of has demand for like 30 heroic crests but i do not have the desire to farm 30 of them yeah is a real problem yeah, yeah. but yeah that, i mean it's just fixed by i i really think even better than the upgrade thing it's just really simple like if you let's just say you think doing a 17 is like twice as hard as doing an 11 or whatever whatever you can break down a 17 crest right now into an 11 crest is it that number should just be higher and then it just solves the whole thing to where if you're doing higher keys and you're over cap it's either giving you a lot more of the other uh crests or it's allowing you to just downgrade more than you do now and then you can keep the system the same i mean they already said they're going to innovate it going into next season like they said this was like kind of a big experiment uh, they're obviously going to change some things. I think probably I've heard a lot of complaints about like a lot of currencies. They're like, there's just a lot of currencies and it's hard to keep track of. I don't know if I necessarily feel that way. Um, but I think another thing about this patch that I don't think we've really talked about yet. Is this the most alt friendly the game has ever been? Like literally ever? Yeah, I mean, probably. unless you I'm trying to remember back to like season four of last uh, of, of uh, Shadowlands because that was. A, a pretty singular season in terms of how fast you could upgrade with with like them having no valor cap just like right out of the gate you could just the upgrade catalyst, everything and dinars, oh. that was a that was a very oh, goaded season the closer to me that's the pinnacle the closer you get to that um that's the platonic ideal of what gearing should look like and the closer any successive season gets to that uh season four which feels well, almost like a fever dream at this point. Didn't the they? Better. Did it, yeah, for, first of all, season four is goaded. And I actually want to just point out something about season four. A lot of people, I've heard some naysayers about season four, which I don't really understand because it's like, it's not like it was supposed to be a real season, right? So they have hundreds of people working on like season one, two, and three of Shadowlands. Thousands. Their season four was made by fucking three people. Three. The number three. Everyone else is working on Dragonflight. One of them had an idea, and they're like, yeah, I think we can spice up the end of this season. And they made all of that from, from like, a couple of people, right? So, like, I feel like the only negative thoughts about Season 3 are people that are people who just thought it was, like, a real season and didn't understand it. And, yeah, so Season 4 is obviously goaded. It was goated, real to me! But Season 4 was obviously <laughs> very, very goaded. But you mentioned that you want to get closer to having dinars. Isn't this the closest the game has been to having dinar? Because like what you did in season four was the dinar gave you a normal version of any item you wanted. And then you use the upgrade things from doing the raids to upgrade them. That's kind of what the game is right now, right? It's pretty easy to go get an item. If you have the chance to get it on LFR normal or heroic 
and then you get the same upgrade things basically that you got in that patch and then now you can upgrade it to a relevant eye level it's not like one for one but i mean this is the closest thing to dinar we're probably ever going to get it's definitely close um, I mean, you still, the problem now is even if you can go, if you, even if you technically could go get something in normal or heroic, everybody else has the same plans. You're not going into normal and heroic with people that already have all of the gear that you want and you're just going to get it traded to you. You still have to roll to get the item that you want. So it's, it's not like a gimme when you go back to those lower difficulties, because if the people have the items, they're just not going to go do normal or heroic. So you're yeah, there with other people, people that need it. For. But yeah, I mean, it's dinars are definitely, uh, and what I, what makes me laugh is people that are like, you know, I don't like the very rare system. I, I wish we could have dinars back and then you could just use dinars to buy the very rare things. And it's like, uh, then why does very do, rare? Do you not exist? understand that that completely defeats the yeah. point of a very rare item? Um, very but yeah, rare I, make no sense. I, I do really like the dinar system. I don't think there should be very rare items in the game, at least not like as a category. You know, if you want to have a legendary or some shit off the last boss that drops at a lower rate or whatever, but to have this many things be lower drop rate, I just think feels bad. Dude, I want to move on to very rare items, but I do want to tie up one thing about the upgrade system before we before we kind of move on from it. And that is that the downside, the only potential downside that any players will feel about the current upgrade system is that it is too fast. But our, our perspective right now is not great on that because we're still fucking getting showered in loot and it feels great. Our, the full take that you could possibly have from this upgrade system can only be had months from now after you've just been full geared and still playing the game for six weeks. It is very likely that, or very possible that you're still playing the game and you're like, damn, it's been nice to have gear this whole time. And it's also very possible that the you know potential downside is, man, I don't really yeah. feel as much of a need to want to play if I feel like there's really no rewards coming from the gameplay I'm doing. So so just that's it's the only thing is that this this take kind of needs to fully cook. You, you have to have time for this to kind of, fully go in but i do want to talk about very rare though um wait well, one more thing but also up, like how much of this how much of an issue is this for people who grind way too hard because like i feel like there are still a lot of people who are much more casual who don't feel like they are getting gear that fast oh you this mean like just be a mm. sort of like not even one percent but maybe like ten percent of the population issue yeah, like, it's yeah, the, the whole, like, yeah. you know, getting gear too quick. It's like a lot of people are like, we're this, not really getting fast. It's not going to touch those players, right? Like, if you do something like nerfing the amount of crests you can get per week, then by definition, the people who are only playing a few keys per week are They're not affected not at all. That, right? Yeah. yeah. Just the people who are, uh, like, grinding. It's, it's, it's like the same conversation in Season 4 when they had uncapped Valor and everyone was spamming plus twos and shit, and people were just like, fuck yeah, I love this. And like, so many people didn't even relate to it because they're just like, I wasn't doing that. It just felt the same, you know? So it's like, and also streamers and content creators are always going to trend more towards playing the game all day, every day, right? So you're the- Oh yeah, the, and I get loot fun old too because I'm a streamer. Let's fuck, get, yeah, dude, being a streamer, this patch is OP as fuck. <laughs> I, I, got, I got Faith Father from 413 to 433 without spending a single crest full four piece in every item in one day. I played for six hours. It's fucking broken. Dude, uh, I, literally, I literally saw Dorky hadn't streamed for three weeks, and then he logs on, turns on his stream, and it's, it's, his title is just Viewer Heroic. What do you mean? I've been streaming here almost every and then, day. And then, he's in, and then he's in Group Finder, Yummy TV Viewer Heroic. Does yeah, that work? When I was, uh, Did that work? Yeah, of course, yeah. Can I, I just tell I was, people um, that it's for Asmongo, growl? Ooh, anecdotal yeah. evidence in, in chat. I'm in a Cutting Edge Guild having issues on Rashok because we have players that aren't geared yet from not doing enough Mythic Plus. I bet that's a ton of fucking guilds that feel yeah. like Yeah, so it's not, yeah, mm -hmm. like... There's plenty of people who don't have enough gear. Um, oh, also, hold on. Okay. Uh, speaking of, of confusing looking for group titles, then maybe this is more of an EU thing. Um, I have noticed what feels like some borderline deceitful looking for group titles um, where <laughs> somebody will say they're doing Echo in the looking for group Oh, that's funny. That's, right. that's fucking funny. It'll be funny. capital Echo. And then it'll be, oh, we're, we're doing, like, Notharian. But, like, I, dude, I see what you're doing here. Like, I know why you no, made no, the title that, that way. That happens here, too. The thing is, is, like, that's it's kind of a net negative because the people you get to sign up to that group that are dumb enough to realize that it's a... that aren't dumb enough... or aren't smart enough to realize that it's a bait, those people probably stink. So, like, you're getting a lot more signups, but you're probably not going to get quality ones, right? I mean, I don't think we're doing it because of Echo, like, Echo the Guild. I'm well, pretty I mean, sure we just have it as Echo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they do it on NA too. Think, like, I'm pretty sure the there's Euro, plenty of people who just don't give I a shit. I think a lot of the Euros just call that boss Echo of Neltharian. They're just like Echo. no, even on. I NA, see it in like the NA group finder as well. Yeah. Yeah, really? like literally look it up right now. 
Because the Why first name of that boss is Echo. Yeah, bro. There are some people who don't give a shit about like Echo the Guild. They just like we had people doing people that to us to in the first couple days of the patch. Like, if you search for like our three group titles that all started with Liquid, there's actually twelve of them with different names, and they were all getting signups and shit to like randomly run their runs. I imagine this a lot is, of them didn't start, but yeah. This is like whenever Euro is called Baron Nash. Yeah, or when they call a battle. I mean, look, 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 look at the reverse envo. Like, you know what's even worse? Calling a battle as a CR me. is brutal. Yeah. You missed me with that shit. One, two, three for summon? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, very rare items last patch were all fucking crazy OP, especially the bow, and they were impossibly hard to get, and there was a lot of negative reaction to those things. So, Blizzard kind of swung the pendulum all the way to the other side. Now... Very rare items, specifically the Nelth Trinkets, got buffed a lot. Uh, I think the number's around 50% drop rate from what they were previously. And they're not that powerful. So, like, they both nerfed the power and increased the accessibility. Uh, there's actually a funny story. So when we did splits, we, we did, like, 500 boss kills before we stepped into Mythic. And none of the very rare trinkets. Oh, damn, 500. None of the rarest. None of the very rare trinkets were the rarest trinkets that dropped. We actually had significantly. This is anecdotal, but like we had significantly less, uh, like essences off of forgotten experiments and things like that because they're dropping on a tier boss, so they're half as likely to drop anyway, right? As opposed to like first boss. And then the actual Neltharian trinkets. Getting any Neltharian Trinket, if you don't care about which one drops, it's actually more likely to drop now than any other item on that boss, any singular specific item. You're more likely to get a Nelth Trinket than any specific item uh, because there's three of them and they were buffed by so much, whereas opposed to last patch, they were half as likely to drop as any... Uh, the Broodkeeper Ring was half as likely to drop from any other thing. So very rare just seems like it's in this weird position where it doesn't really make sense. Like... The, 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 and actually, its first incarnation is probably the only thing that makes sense, where they're, like, very rare and they're sick. That, like, kind of made sense of the system, but now that they're super common and they're not good, it's definitely begs the question of what are we doing here kind of thing. Like, it doesn't really seem to make any sense. What, what do you guys think? Um, I think they should be very common and very powerful. Very common. But then they're just regular pieces of gear, right? We've had very... But we've we've had powerful. All, we've had... Oh, but you, think they should be, you think they should be separate loot then? Like, they're... Because, like, the, we've had insane trinkets drop off bosses for fucking 15 years, and sometimes items are just really good, but they're not, like, a separate loot table. I think all of the best gear in the raid should drop off the first three bosses. <laughs> You're a fuck. Okay. Just, all right. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so, someone else. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that, like... So, Blizzard did this shit last year where a lot of the trinkets from raid were just god-awful, whereas this tier, at least... It, a large portion of the trinkets, including the Neltharian trinkets, are at least decent. Now, the Neltharian trinket may not be best, but, like, it is weird that they're flagged as very rare. I, I, I think that brain. the very rare flag can probably go. I do think that the relative power of trinkets just across the whole entire raid is fine, though. I actually think they, they kind of smurfed with trinkets this patch in general. Like, I think the trinkets it, are just really cool. Like all, like, all the trinkets you have possibly to use for most... Uh, classes they have cool unique different and powerful trinkets i actually feel like they've done that really well this is entire expansion actually like with, if you... the, with the asterisk that for raid specifically because all the mythic plus trinkets are super dog shit well i mean i'm kind of looking at it like as a whole like you do both kind of thing like uh but yeah i guess maybe the mythic plus ones but the mythic plus ones weren't doggy last year but yeah i yeah. mean the... no but this tier like if you look at any of the like healer um, sort of like Sims, quote unquote, for the trinkets. There's there's this like um, massive shelf that sticks out over every other trinket of like the top four, and it's all the four trinkets that drop from raid. And then you have this enormous drop off, and then starts the like crafted trinkets and the stuff you get from Mythic Plus. And it is insane how literally any trinket you get from raid is is like better by miles than the best trinket you can get outside of raid. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good that the chromatic essence isn't very rare as well, because that's basically the icon of this tier, right? Like, kind yeah. of everybody wants it. It's funny, it is, though. It is, like, yeah. it, it is, at least from our estimation, with, with we have more sample size than any other source. It is it is rarer than every trinket in the game. Because it it of is what also boss the trinket that of. my guild is most hurting for, although, I, again, it might be just a, a ratio of demand. To we we saw we saw definitely the moon. almost half as many essences as any other trinket in the raid over 500 boss kills. Maybe that's the secret to avoid people getting mad about very rare. Just tag the other items of the very rare. 
and then yeah. just lie yeah just make it up yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a uh, it is definitely some shit if they just kind of scrapped very rare after two tiers i don't think it would yeah i think it's, i think the, mine. the like hunter bow evoker legendary evoker staff although that wasn't even technically very rare i feel like those sorts of like a class specific item can be kind of cool especially if it's like unlocked by the world first game. yo that, that evoker so legendary cool. the entire yeah. evoker legendary thing was fucking awesome right yeah, like that I, is sick dude first of all they kept a goddamn legendary mostly under wraps and without it being data mined like how the fuck did they do that like they've they've never like dude in like the previous years that shit would have been like all over wowhead like people like had it linked and stuff but like no one knew how it dropped you didn't know where it came from like like i think how they handled that was actually pretty sick Okay, allow me to offer a counterpoint. Fuck evokers. Fuck giving evokers <laughs> special weapons two tiers in a row. Okay, so how do you feel about the Brewmaster Monk staff, JB, since you play with the Brewmaster Monk? It's off of Rashok, which means that if it drops, it took the place of a Rashok trinket, so fuck that dog shit staff too. Yeah, the I just think the Evoker Legendary is super cool. Also, I just like feel really good about it because like I know I think a few of you guys have like played with Sang before, but like Sang is like the yeah. nicest human being on earth and like he and loves lore and loves like he literally makes our quest line and like new patch guides for us and i think he writes for wowhead as well and yeah. the fact that he got the staff uh and then also like the community got to like go through and see that happen with him was like super awesome even though kind of controversial he turbo stole this the legendary by the way like he he like like sang probably should have been the person to get it just because he fucking loves this shit but like he definitely like had you could hear it in our kill like everyone left their computer and sang's at home and he's like guys like where's the fucking legendary he wouldn't stop talking about it and then he like told someone to like go to scott's pc and like trade it to him or some shit <laughs> then we got the legendary legendary <laughs> Uh, well, it's got his Latos has it. Tell him to fucking give it over. I need that. Tell fucking Scott to give you the weapon. That was close, man. I mean, it wouldn't have been close if THG to get. <laughs> I don't think Sang can get the legendary. I think no, it man. Be good, right? Nope, it's mine. Nah, nah, nah. I accepted the quest. It's gone. <laughs> like he, he just, is, he legit stole it. That is fucking hilarious. It's so funny knowing that it's Sang too. That thing is super powerful though. I, I wonder, like it might be the swing between them being like super goaded or not. It's like super early in the Mythic Plus season, but they seem like really, really fucking good. You're talking about dev specifically? Oh, yeah. Dude, Devastation yeah, fucking I, roasts. I mean, de dev plus Spreest looks like it's already a really solid combo. It, it, it's it's too early in the season, I think, to even be able to like say like how good it's going to end up being, but it looks insane. And then Augmentation Evoker, is that, is that spec going to be fucking crazy? or? Dude, it's going to be broken. There's no way it's not <laughs> It's going to be dog shit or it's going to be insane. There's like there's no in-between. Yeah, it's the first time they're doing a support class. I mean, you know what that is, right? Like, that. this is the beginning of the end of healers oh <laughs> my god this is oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> We're going down even good there is from no a, way i'm not even saying this from a doomer expansions. perspective so this is this is the the like i feel like over time people have just become they don't like the healer role anymore you started with the holy trinity and wow you know based off like other mmos you got tanks healers and dps and i feel like enough people have decided they just don't like healers that yeah, imagine he, there's healer. there's other MMOs where healer just doesn't exist. You know, everybody's oh, yeah, responsible for their own health pool, more or less. Maybe you have like some supplemental healing a little bit from other people, but for the most part, there's no dedicated healer role. And augmentation is the first toe that Blizzard is dipping into this pool of like, what if we just got rid of healers completely? Uh, well, what if we just made support classes? So I don't Dude, think I think they. Yeah, I think they made a smart decision by classifying them as a DPS and not giving them the ability to be able to fucking heal. But you can change that quickly. Uh, so I have I have heard some, like, word on the street. Not, like, word on the street, word on the street, but, like, I, I've heard rumblings that, like, the plan is to kind of convert Disc Priest into, like, that kind of support-ish class as well. 
but I don't I don't think it's happening anytime Do, soon. Like I doubt they'd want to put amazing. two I doubt they'd want to put two of those in the game at any at any like at the same time when it's already so like hard to figure out probably. Like there's a reason that shit's not coming out at the beginning of a patch, right? Like they're going to need like a month or two to figure that shit out, but Dude, that'd be so sick. I mean, Max, do you remember do you remember in EN whenever they reworked disk into being that hybrid DPS healer thing that it was for like Ian and Trial of Valor. No, they DPS. never did that. What they did was they were like, oh, we want Dis to be like 70% yeah. of a healer and like 50% of a DPS. So it's like super value. That was the OG vision for Disc. I'm actually glad you brought that up. And then they didn't do that. And they just topped healing and did like insane yes. damage for like three that years. <laughs> Yeah, but. that was what I was gonna say. It was like fucking stupid, and they just backed out. They just did infinite damn. Like what? I, I don't. I don't see them going in a good spot with support roles in this game. I think it's. Bad. I mean, it's good I, that they're trying something different, right? Because like, WoW has been doing the same shit for like, yeah, no, for sure. Many expansions now, and they've been starting to like make big changes in Dragonfly and going forward. So I mean, it actually sounds really, really I, fucking cool. I respect like, it. If like th there's a way they can they can make it really good. I, I I can't wait to plan around that and like try to figure out how good that's going to be going into a raid. Yeah, I suspect it's got to be like OP for us, right? Like, I don't know if, if augmentation is about buffing people and like it's does, it's balanced to be good for the average player. I feel like it's got to be insane for the min max. So but... I yes, I think I think it's going to be I think it's going to be tedious too. Because at least right now, it's about, like, the four people closest to you. So just if you imagine a, deep, a augmentation evoker walking around with a raid marker on their head and, like, four people are, like, fucking pillared to this person, like, that's dog shit gameplay. So, like, I hope that's not a thing. Hope they make that a little cleaner, like, allow you to select the people before combat would actually be a lot better. It's going to be either good in dungeons and broken in raid, or it's going to be good in raid and terrible in dungeons. Because it buffs four other people, right? But... But in dungeons, 50% of those people are healers and tanks. So, like, it's just going to have less overall value, right? Unless there's, like, a different build you can play in Mythic Plus that, like, brings more personal damage or something. But I, I mean, it's an evoker, so I can tell you which of those two things it's going to be. <laughs> Dude, why are you so tilted about evoker? Dude, Devastation Evoker was trash in Season 1. It was like... Well, it, yeah, but only because they couldn't realistically buff it without making Preservation Evoker like something completely... Dude, Preservation Evoker was fucking awesome to play there. Did you not play the Dragon Healer? It, okay, look, it was fun. Like, I I will agree it, it was a fun healer to play. It's just, there's like, there was a point where it was like, all right, you guys left Evoker kind of overpowered for a while. People rolled on the class. You got what you wanted. Like, there's Evoker representation, and it's time now to, to nerf it. And then they dragged that for like two or three months of like slow playing these like little baby nerfs that everybody knew was definitely not enough to make Evoker okay but they would be like well look we're just you know we're, we're feeling it out we're gonna nerf fucking uh we're gonna shave like five percent off of the 30 percent lead that they have over every healer dude j j dot b what happened what made you so jaded and like what what was the thing was it is it like a bald thing or is it like a like at some it's, point you just started getting mad it's just a healer issue. it was fun to be mad it's fun to be mad like okay when people <laughs> When people do that, like, oh, you're mad thing, it's like, yes, I'm fucking mad because it's it's more entertaining for everybody else. Like, it's fun to be mad and just say, like, unhinged shit. And it's also more entertaining to listen to that. So you're just putting on an act? You're just, you're just I mean, being look, the hot take guy? I guess that's I kind of a good 80%, bit. I believe 80% of the shit I say. And even the shit that I don't <laughs> believe fully, I believe most of it. But maybe we'll, like, put, put you know, <laughs> emphasize it a little bit. Uh, Let's fucking go. To, to make a point, you know? Like, maybe it's like... Because sometimes you got to do that. Like, sometimes if you if you have a point you, you want to make and you make it in a reasonable, rational way, people just ignore it. But if you make it in, like, a fucking like weird like way off to one end of the spectrum type of way then it, you're like, like the skip you're like the heads. skip bayless of wow so you used to be a lawyer right well i have me i have a law degree yeah so you're a lawyer now okay so like that's crazy that you're a lawyer <laughs> which is like all about like facts and shit and then your whole bit online is just like believing 80 percent of what you say that's a crazy transformation <laughs> um you'd be surprised the number of people that are probably more like me in law school than aren't actually that kind of makes sense yeah, someone in chat goes, lawyers don't believe 80% of what they say. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's swap over to Mythic Plus. So I have done actually three Mythic Plus dungeons, but I did them all in the PTR. The dungeons were seeming like better than normal because like Freehold wasn't even like a preferred key. And I still think Freehold is awesome. 
And I did Oldemon, which at the beginning of the expansion I thought was going to be absolute dog shit, and I just don't hate running that dungeon. I've I've heard community sentiment from people on my stream saying that, like, dude, it's just been great running Mythic Plus this season. I want to ask you guys, number one, if you feel the same way. Uh, and then also, do you think that it's more that the they made the affixes less cringe? Or is it because that the map pool is actually really good? Well, first off, I'll echo the sentiment that I was very not looking forward to this dungeon pool. Like when as really? the season started to get going, really? I was looking at the dungeons and I was like, Jesus, I, n none of these Explain seem interesting. JV. Aside from like Freehold and Underrot, I was like, none of this looks interesting. I felt, I felt um, fairly confident that the four Dragonflight dungeons that were in this season were the four worst ones from beta. And I was just like, man, this season's going to suck. And I was totally wrong. Like, I have enjoyed virtually every dungeon. And the parts of the dungeons that I don't, that I didn't like, a lot of that got fixed fairly quickly. That would be my biggest complaint of the season is, is the amount of tuning that needed to be done after launch, which I don't think is defensible. Uh, I don't like, and it seems like a recurring theme yep. from Blizzard that they they just know that they're not going to have the dungeons tuned until like a month into the expansion. I don't, I don't. They machine agree with that. gun balanced these dungeons at the beginning. They did, of they the did it very season, quickly, right? but that should have all been in beta. Like the stuff that yeah, got changed should have occurred well before agree. live. But I do think that this dungeon pool has ended up being a lot of fun, and there there were a few dungeons last season that I just ended up hating doing, and I have not yet gotten to that point with any of the dungeons in this world. What pool. were they, JV? Uh, Academy with Veximus. Uh, I just I got to the point Ain't where no I just couldn't way. stand that shit. Yeah, Academy I just, owns. You hated I fucking Academy? hated that. I hated Veximus. It was Veximus. It was just Veximus. Ruined the entire fucking dungeon. Why? Well, just heal. He's not yep. believing what he's saying right now, boys. Don't listen to him. Yeah, what happened okay, to the like healer dungeons being else, the healer else? checks being the fun part? That's not a healer check. It's a fucking... Is the, I mean, maybe it's a rest of druid thing, but like that... The... the healing profile required for that fight was just incredibly aggravating of like very short very very outrageous dots that were randomly placed on three members so you couldn't even guess who of the three of the four eligible people were going to get it and then you had timing overlaps of like knockbacks and shit that would just line up badly and it was it was a bad boss poorly designed wasn't a big fan so it ended up like tainting the entire dungeon for me Sorry, once I start talking about Academy, it just uh, <laughs> his fucking. I've, I've even forgotten what one I, of the fifty he's topics. A, he's your other dungeon seen, that you right? hated. He's all which, worked what up. was it? He's all worked oh, up. Uh, other dungeon I hated uh, from last. <laughs> hang, I gotta remember what last season dungeons were. Um, the, Temple uh, maybe. Azure Vault. Temple, oh, temple for me. Temple, temple seemed temple low tier. Yeah, temp yeah, Temple wasn't great. I fucking but hate that key. They also just didn't uh, tune it the whole patch. Like that, the tank yeah, damage at the end of that dungeon was completely different than every other key. The actually, Temple first boss was the maybe most aggravating boss because of the way that it interacted with affixes, mm -hmm. and what should have been a fairly straightforward boss became totally unmanageable with like half of the fucking affixes in the game. So you guys are talking about like dungeons you liked or didn't like. What are what are your all's favorite dungeons this patch? Look, I, I'm gonna sound crazy. I can't believe I'm saying this, but okay. I actually fuck with Brackenhide Hollow. Yeah, and I can't believe that's the case. That's not a hot take. No, I'm asking you to But get but given how that dungeon came out of beta, given what it looked like on day one of 10.0. I mean, I thought oh, it was bro, fun. day it one of 10.0, dude, yeah, every, this is the thing, though, is this yeah. was everyone's take. Like, everyone at the beginning of this expansion was like, holy fuck, Brackenhide is going to suck. And then, like, and then once you did PTR for 10.1, it was like, this dungeon doesn't suck at all. Like, this is fine. And people just don't know, yeah. But yeah, it's actually, it's actually a really well-designed dungeon now. Um, in fact, I would probably say it's too easy, which is... I think just the that, timer's too forgiving. I think the timer's too forgiving, and the fact that you get free count from those fucking trees is problematic. But yeah, I like that one. Um, what do you like, Dreadnose? So I like Brackenhide as well. I think that... I actually think Underrod is way too easy. I think that's going to be something I dislike about the season is that mm -hmm. there's another like key that's two levels easier mm -hmm. than every other key. Yeah. Mm, I don't going to be two levels easier. Yeah, I, 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 was, I don't know. I feel like the difficulty is pretty close at the moment, honestly. Uh, if you look if you look at the data, Underrod is miles easier. Like. I mean, that's only it's also the key that people target. To far, it's so true. What? It's also the no. key that people need gear from and people know the most. But still, I, I, I think it is the next like Shadowman Burial Grounds. To its credit, it is more fun than Shadowman Burial Grounds. 
So if I have to do half of my keys, Bro, Underrod in fucking there, owns. It's it, it, less it, bad, but still it is bad if there's one key that you're like hard re-rolling for or against. That's I think that's always a problem with the season. If if you look at the data, Dorky, it is 2x the representation of the second most uh uh, completed key at 20. Which is now bracket. I mean, I think yeah, well, okay, that's, that's that. Really. I don't think yeah. that's really necessarily a bad thing because that, like, it's the one that people are farming the most for loot. I'm almost positive. And then it's... Yeah, it, people it, are in, on the rubber. And, 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 like, once you have the de facto easiest key, when you start linking keys that people want to do, they're just going to select mm -hmm. the under rod every time. So, like, like, I feel like that's scaled in some way. But I also... Okay, let me know what you guys think about this. I think as long as it's not too extreme, like, Shadow Moon Burial Grounds is too extreme. I think having dungeons in the dungeon set that are harder and easier is fine like I, I think it is fine that there are like one to two easier ones one to two harder ones and then most of the other ones being balanced i don't think I, they all need to be the same difficulty i disagree because of how the key reroll system currently works the key reroll system mm, yeah. works only if dungeons are of a similar skill level at, at this current time if the key reroll system was a little bit different i would tend to agree because like I don't. I don't really care if I'm doing a 24 of a whatever versus a 26 of a. Yeah, they dungeon. feel the same difficulty. So like. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of an issue of like if I time a 26 Shadow and Burial Grounds and I get a 27 Temple of the Jade Serpent, okay, I, I'm gonna drop this key three levels or two levels or something and go time it. Right. Whereas you could hit a Court of Stars and just you know bang bang bang. Yeah. Score, exactly. Which again, it's like it's not the end of the world, but it is an annoying feature for if you are like pushing title this season. It's it's I don't even think it's an issue of pushing title. I think it's an issue of whenever you start pushing like what is your uh, top end, right? Like I, I don't even think it's like a only an issue for like high end players. I think it's an issue for people who are pushing keys that are difficult for them. Yeah, I mean the the score pushing phenomenon is something that I think, especially with gear rewards being so good now, all the way up to twenty, there's not as much like intermediate score pushing without it getting yeah. up into that title range but definitely for anybody that's doing that i think that having big outlier keys is a problem um but yeah i mean the the, the dungeon zone right like under odds great freehold's great Brackenite is great freehold, yeah i'm not a huge fan of like vortex pinnacle or halls of infusion but I, it's it's a case of like not a huge fan compared to you know temple the jade serpent get me out of here right um they made for the first time in this season, they have modifiers on certain abilities that stop yeah. scaling at certain key levels. Like God, they so good. they stop scaling at twenty or and like they because like it's been super annoying in previous seasons where you get to a high enough key level and it's just like one specific ability you just bottlenecks you and that's like obviously dog shit. Have you guys noticed that that's like been really a lot better this season or is there any abilities you feel like should be added to that? Oh my Wait, god, an ability got? that should stop scaling, <laughs> the shit on the first boss in Halls of Infusion. Um, yep. That shit on the ground, that needs to be capped by oh. something. I don't care if it's key level or whatever, but I popped fucking stampeding roar today and I couldn't get out of it before I died. Like, all <laughs> I was trying to do was W key out of it as fast as I could, and I oh. couldn't get the fuck out of that goddamn pool before oh, I died. Oh, but JB, it is capped. It's capped by how fast you can kill those orbs in the intermission. Yes, but, they, but that's what I'm saying is it shouldn't be able to get that big. I don't care how slow my yeah. DPS are. Yeah. I agree, 20 stacks. I think add HPs thing. in general. Like, so I feel like a running theme in this patch is things like Totem on the last boss of Brackenhide, the ads on the last boss of Vortex Pinnacle, uh, you know, the ads on the first boss of Halls, even, yeah, even the last boss of Halls. There's just like too many of these ads that you have to kill. And it gets harder and harder with each key level. Mm -hmm. Like that shit should not scale. So the, yeah, their health, or it should cap off, or their the damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah health. The health. health. The, yeah, the damage is the damage is most. That does okay. make sense or because like at, spawn. as a yeah. as a fight construct, like swapping off of a boss and killing an ad kind of has a like maximum duration of how often you are hitting the ad yeah. instead of the boss on the fight, where it's like clearly out of whack and not right. Like like there's like there's a nice number i don't know what it is maybe it's like swapping for like six to ten seconds or something like that but it's never long like anytime it's longer than that it's like something here is wrong i wanted to ask you guys about seasonal epic so we just got done having a seasonal epic are like super polarizing right because like the bad ones make the make the uh season much worse you guys just saw with thundering and the good ones in the past have like made seasons like objectively better just by existing uh this is uh now we are this this is the first time in the middle of an expansion where you've gone from like one full season to a new full season with eight new dungeons. And I wonder how that has like interacted with the community and maybe not at like a super high key level, but I think, you know, like the people who are 
you know the only downside of that is like like pug tanks don't learn it fast enough so like the the like regular group finding scene isn't as good and then also how does it feel not really having a seasonal do you guys feel does it feel empty not having one or does it feel good not having thundering i, I don't think it feels empty but i am kind of sad that we don't have a seasonal actually i feel like i got a lot of value out of seasonals over time but i think that with eight new dungeons plus a new seasonal on top of it, it might have been a bit much. So I, I don't have any, too many complaints. I do think that seasonals by design were fun though. I, I liked them just as a whole. So I think a lot of people that I've heard about talked about how seasonals going away. Well, like, so initially people were sad about seasonals going away, right? But I feel like a lot of people after having played with no seasonal, they feel a lot more free. They don't really feel bogged yeah. down by like something that they have to constantly worry about. But I do think this brings a completely different issue that I didn't really think about coming into the season. Removing seasonals made timers way too free. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but right now we are running into a massive issue of surviving. Oh yeah, it's gonna right, kill you. Like we are literally again. fighting. Yeah. yeah, cause like people are out here two chesting 19s, but they're struggling to time a 21 because of how you just get one shot. Like it's ridiculous. On a 20 fortified, Bracken Hyde stink breath, that guy just one shots. Oh, you skipped that's that guy. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I know, but like, I'm just <laughs> out here pugging twenties, right? Like, I'm out here pugging twenties, and I've never pugged a twenty where you would just get one shot by a mechanic. That like, that's ridiculous. Like a target mechanic, and people are out here timing twenties with like twenty plus deaths. I'm sure you guys have seen it too, right? Like even I like mean, I've been a rank part of one it, yeah. keys, people are doing like ten, twenty deaths, and they're still timing the key. Uh, the the and rank I think one timer is just way too free right now. The rank one key in total is an underwrought two chest. It's a 25. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking No, the ridiculous. rank one key is a two chest? Yeah. yeah. That's actually funny as fuck. <laughs> That's it's crazy. such a bad problem at the moment, and I don't think anyone has foresaw it coming. Okay, but, and I, I'm not even sure I believe this, but I'll just <laughs> throw it out there, devil's advocate. What if instead of the, the idea of a, a tested Mythic Plus being a run where you didn't have many deaths, what if instead we normalized a key's being difficult enough that it's expected that you die a few times like that it's you're supposed to like in in our mind because of the way mythic plus has been tuned and the way timers have been tuned it's expected that if you complete a key and you time it that you had minimal amounts of deaths that you didn't you know you either had like less than five or like maybe one group wipe or something and you came back quickly but what if keys were tuned in a way that it was expected that you were going to fail a certain amount in the key that that you're supposed they're supposed to be difficult enough that you die um you're uh. supposed to and so instead of a quote unquote good key being that you died five times a good key is that you only died 15 times and it's just that that yeah, is that the sounds, level of difficulty hey, Tettles is already living in that world <laughs> shut the <laughs> fuck up <laughs> yeah, jesus but, uh, but i mean that removes the whole speed running aspect of the game because like you would pay, pretty much just play like a complete it's somewhere in the middle right because be I mean, you so gotta speed run back there's the there's there's definitely something just as bad about dying or wiping in a key ever and instantly knowing it's over and going next so it's like i i think i think it is somewhere in the middle because you have to keep in mind that the dungeons are harder to make up for that, right? You're in a key level that is like more dangerous, but it also allows a little bit more death than it just being like one person dies and you just GG, right? So I, I think there's there's some truth in what he's saying. Uh, well, but no, but like what that would lead to is you just, everyone just playing extremely safe in every key, like to the point where you could even possibly run double healer. Like I just maybe that's don't a little even... Bit too cooked, oh, like that's... You just CC mobs. Oh, JV like, That's a so big cook. Right yeah, now, dude, yeah, dude, holy fuck, JV is having a he's smiling i i, I could hear it <laughs> bro if you had two healers i would have twice as many chances to get the loot that i need uh but, but like i just i just wonder like what the design decision would even look like where it's it's hard enough to where deaths are expected but not to the point where dorky is complaining about stink breath one tapping people like what is the in between here where it is hard enough where you expect to die to 15 times but you're not getting one well, it tap sounds like stink it's a breath. stink breath problem right well, no, 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 no. But I mean, like, what what JB is basically saying is that like you should be able to have deaths and still time keys, right? That's. Well, I mean, I'm obviously, thinking. the higher I mean, you like get, said, the higher you go, <laughs> the higher you go, the less that will always become true for sure. Like, I, I would say that what what seems to be the most fun thing for High Mythic Plus and kind of what Dorky is saying is that you have like played well enough and done enough damage to time the key. What's kind of boring is like. If you're not really worried about doing the damage part of it, and you just have yeah, you to don't be have to alive, optimize. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you and then, and then pull like two mobs at a time. And basically, like, why yeah, would you play 
pretty aggressive. The difficulty yeah, should be that. like, holy fuck, we like played so well and did so much. That you're like almost removing the damage element from from the key. The, the most fun parts of Mythic Plus to me is like whenever you do like unique routing and stuff like that, and you and you actually yeah, try to with figure some, out how like, I can squeeze out more time. Some super sick packs to yeah uh, squeeze out. But more But you don't time. necessarily like, need an aggressive timer for that. Like the people that are gonna play the game that way are gonna play the game that way regardless of what the timer is on the key because at a certain point. You no, even won't. if all the keys were super Absolutely easy, not. then it becomes a competition of like, oh, well, we timed the key, and it's like cool, but this other group three chested it. You only well, two chested it, pussy. Dorky, I think JB's never done the triple Veximus pull, and it shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's just not true though. Like when people who do high keys, they it's all about play safe, big IO. We saw it in Legion, and right? Like gets, in Legion, you would literally just yeah, you wait, literally wipe wait for times. your lust, right? Before pulling oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it, or you would pull it twice, right? Isn't that what like capping things at 20 should do? Like the things that are super fucking lethal, the add yeah. health on those bosses, you cap that at 20 and then timing things above 20 is yeah. just like a damage thing. And it's like, you know, you can live. It's still difficult. You should have that be a like you can mess up kind of thing. But like the thing that's capping you is your ability to optimize and not your ability to just play safe I and live. If they're in like circling back to the question at, at the beginning, I, I do think like if they're going to look to cap anything, it's probably like add HP on bosses because like ads that are spawned by bosses have always been a problem. Like, uh, like even, even in Temple of the Jade Serp, and I was hoping that we were going to get away from this shit, but for some reason that boss kept summoning ads over and over again and, and it just became yeah. so stupid. Well, but that's just a design issue. Yeah, I mean, they, I think they, they the stopped designing bosses like that. Is... Question. Either one, there's too much damage in keys, or two, things die too fast. Uh, I want some people to like kind of pull up some things from chat that might be interesting for us to talk about at the end of this. I have like 20, like 30 more minutes, something like that. If this season is exactly the way it is right now, but encrypted is on every single key, is the season better? I would say so, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, my, my proposal for this is like, okay, first two seasons of the expansion have entirely new dungeons those can have no seasonal and then like last two seasons of each expansion where you're running back like you know the dragonflight dungeons for their second time and it's like all dungeons that have been seen before i think that's a good time to either bust out a good old affix or a good new affix mm, yeah good good i like i actually was thinking about the way that they design seasonals and i think their design process is flawed and i know that sounds like i'm saying something that's like super nuanced and i'm like an idiot i don't know what i'm talking about but what they how they design affixes is very clearly based on theme before gameplay. They come up with theme before gameplay, and the ones that have been really, really awesome have been because the theme is great, and then the gameplay ends up working based on that. Like, if you look back to Infested, if you look at the last boss or, like, the main big bad guy of every patch, the seasonal affix is insanely about them. Like, it's so thematic that it's, it's like, so clearly, like, the gameplay even of it is based on the boss. I think they should just approach seasonal affixes differently i think you approach it from an idea of gameplay that you think would be really sick and then you could just skin that shit you know you could just skin it to look like the last boss kind of you know it would be a lot better what's frustrating about seasonal affixes is, is that in an era where blizzard seems to be listening to players more than ever you know we went through i don't know how many years of uh a sort of blizzard philosophy of like we know best we we will maybe listen to what you have to say, but only to like inform our opinion that we're gonna form on our own. Um, that it actually feels like over the last, you know, kind of starting with the removal of the uh, target cap, from that sort of point onwards, it seems like there's been more and more of Blizzard listening to players, at least seemingly listening mm -hmm. to players and letting them. Oh, that's that's inarguable. The They've definitely the done that. Yes, and, sure. And, 9.5 is when that changed. The that's what makes the seasonal affix thing so weird is is that I feel like across the board players are like give us affixes that are fun that are like a, a positive affix that make the game more enjoyable not less enjoyable and in a time when Blizzard seems to be listening to so many other things about players they have dug in so fucking hard with this idea that like affixes need to suck and they need to be punishing okay, they've... and they definitely walked that back a little bit, though. Like, I think this patch, the affixes in general are, like, way walked back. Like, they, they basically were like, let's make all the affixes more free than they were before. They've never made that decision yeah. in but the they're, past. they're still not positive, though. They're still well, not. I what, yeah, I okay, well, hold saying. on. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, but they're, I, I, think, I, I think it's a matter of time before they do that. I think that they're trying shit. And, and for, for the longest time, JB, and I mean, we've done keys fucking since the inception of Mythic Plus. Mythic, like, the affixes have stayed the exact same. And this season, we have 
three new affixes, and some of the worst affixes got removed from the game. Like, I think, I think that, and they also removed uh, seasonal affixes because they were trying things. And I think that for the longest time, they weren't even willing to try shit. They were willing to give us eight of the exact same dungeons for the whole entire expansion and the exact same affixes over the course of the whole entire expansion. The only thing that changed was seasonal affixes. I think, I think that they've proven that they were willing to try things. And I, I at least, I, I'm glad that they're willing to at least attempt to change things. I mean, they, they made all of the affixes way, almost all of them. I think there was a few they didn't really touch, but they removed the really dog shit ones. They made some of the worst ones easier. And the new ones they implemented are all like pretty fucking free. I think incorporeal... Uh, uh yeah, but like that's the, that's the thing. So, 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 love that so, one. so I don't yeah, like that. Incorporeal is not good, but like it's just like a couple of globals. Like it's not hard. It's just like annoying, right? But like, like that. The thing is about those is like you can just say that affixes are just less ass this season because they made them all more, yeah, more uh, like thought, like brainless, you know, and like that. So that's they're they, they could have only possibly gotten positive feedback from this, right? And they made a pretty big swing. So I imagine if they're like, okay. Affix is not being what you're focusing on in the key. Good. So, you know, they can probably go from there. But yeah, I, I do. I do agree that they're I think it's only a matter of time before they do that. I, and I, I heard somebody earlier talking about how many times the dungeons have been hotfixed. I think it was Dorky who was bringing it up and saying that that's like a massive problem. I think if they've been I think if they're proving that they're willing to slap down changes on dungeons that are at least a little bit too overtuned, I think that that is totally fine. If this is the pace of changes that we're going to be getting out of Blizzard. I think it's okay for them to like release a little bit overtuned. I disagree. Some of the, I mean, some of the changes were so I, egregious. Like some of the, yeah. some of the bosses were so wildly out of Bro, proportion. They, He's talking about affixes. Well, they, right? buffed, they buffed them. Yeah, they buffed coming into the patch. and uh, you do. What was it? Worm boss. Yeah. Well, so so they they said this last season when like Stratum Moon burial grounds and specifically Bone Maw were like kind of a site for sore eyes kind of thing. They they were like yeah this is why you usually release things and if you're if you're unsure in any direction you always make it a little harder because you can always nerf it where it's like super weird to like buff things like dude look at the reaction to them like yeah. in quotes buffing Scarn today right like like people would lose their fucking minds if if they like buffed under rot a lot you know even if they even if they brought under rot up to the average key right now people would be mad as fuck so like mm, I'm not sure you need to buff under rot and I'll tell you they when I knew to. this was was to. this was the case. I found myself last week on Fortified just face tanking a fucking swarmer. And in the moment, I thought to myself, this is outrageous. Like, this thing would have one shot me in BFA. And right now, I am disrespecting it. Like, I'm just standing here, like, letting it melee me because I CBA to, like, vortex it and run away or anything. And it was in that moment that I knew that Underrot was not the dungeon I remembered. And they need to make it harder. Not lethal. It's kind of a similar issue that Shadow Moon Burial Grounds had, where it just nothing was lethal. Yeah, I was gonna ask if it was more of like a timer issue or more of like an actual the whole dungeon issue, but that's fine. What about Tyrannical and Fortified? Another season of that. You guys still kind of have your takes about that? Like my, mine for the longest time was just very simply put as the optimal time to fight trash and bosses is achieved on Fortified. And tyrannical, it seems like you're fighting trash not as much as you should, and and it feels like bosses are clearly lasting too long. What do you guys think about that? I think it's I think it's weird because it's like tyrannical is much easier at like lower level keys. Um, tyrannical also just feels a little bit easier this season than last one, which is kind of weird because I think fortified just kind of fuck like mobs are insane at the moment. Dude, freehold just trash. bangs your tank on fortified. <laughs> there's yeah, so much there's bangs. so much melee damage in freehold it's insane. <laughs> it's actually like all just huge melees. I'm okay with uh, I'm okay with dungeons that ruin tanks. Um Oh, interesting. <laughs> I actually agree. <laughs> yeah, actually, Cuz they deserve I mean, it's it. It's more like, fun though that way. Cuz they deserve they, it. Yeah. Look, there's some fucking tanks out here who I swear to god they will like wag their <laughs> finger at any player that screws up a mechanic because it's impossible to die as a tank. So that like t there are tanks that stand in shit and they don't even know that they're standing in it and then they'll Ooh. play like the Wait, that's actually character. true. That's actually they'll, true. They'll they'll stand in the same thing and die and they'll be like, "Wait, especially that does in raid, especially in raid, it's like extra bad." So yeah, I'm okay with like some dungeons that do just like crank the tanks and and then they have to experience what it's like to to be vulnerable, you know, to have the ability to die, to not be immortal, 
And I think having that show up every once in a while, having some affixes that expose tanks, that's that's okay. I think that's kind of true of healers too, though. Like, so heal yeah. healers do, like, obviously more healing to themselves than they do to other people's nat naturally, not even just from leech. And But I feel like you, whenever a healer dies, like, you know the group is dead, so it's more noticeable too. So it's it's like a little. Well, bit the thing of... the thing with tanking though is that like, you know tanking just requires so much more brain power than healing. So, so true. Like it's expected that you would get hit by stuff more <laughs> just because your cognitive is way more overloaded. Loge. You know, you're like having to like worry about your healer, your what your healer has in terms of mana. You have to like worry about positioning. You have to worry about what mobs you're pulling and grouping and aggro and your devastation evoker just ripping a fat breath on pole. You have to read chat. And, you know, you're like having to like babysit. <laughs> you, have to yeah, you have to read chat too. That's very true. Yeah, that has a real problem. You, you have to, to like chat. babysit everyone, make sure everyone's like doing their jobs. Wait, are tanks less uh, hard to find this season? I know that's been like a plague in like previous seasons. Where, no, it's like, actually it... healers that are hard to find. It feels like I'm not sure if it's just a uh, anecdotal thing. I'm actually surprised that tanks were ever hard to find in mythic plus because like, that's just kind of the most fun tanking is for most people. Like, that's, like, the most accessible way to have fun tanking. So, like, that makes sense. There's just sense. too much responsibility, I think. Yeah, it's it's just way more work than, like, DPSing or healing a key. Or, I mean, okay, healing a key at a high level is, is hard. I'm not I'm not trying to get a monologue here or anything, but... <laughs> uh, the, and, like, a medium key, like, the tank is the pilot, right? That's a, oh, dude, the a tank, lot of tank is... You're getting a There's monologue. There's a reason pretty place tank, and it's because <laughs> yeah, you're getting you're your you're signing up for like more than just tanking. That's the problem with playing a tank is, is that you're signing up for tanking and it's like you're the tank and you make the route. You're the tank and you probably are shot calling half the keys, even though you probably shouldn't be. And like if anything goes wrong in the key, everyone's going to like the, the snap reaction is going to be to blame the tank uh, unless there's really good evidence to the contrary that it was somebody else's specific fault. And it may be more fun to play tank, but like it's not fun enough to sign up for that shit. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people. I think I think healing I too. People don't want to heal because, like, if you look at like how much damage you can do in like a higher key with like really really good players, it's actually a lot less than you could do at like a lower key level because you're just most likely playing with players that are taking a lot more damage. So like it's kind of hard to train yourself how to play the right way because there's just like two different versions of how you have to heal a key based on what key level you're doing and who you're playing with. Yeah, because I do hear that a lot from tanks that say like you know they enjoy tanking in plus and they want to tank in plus, but they don't want to have to do all this shit. Like it's just way too much. And there's so much stress. You're just like the whole group. Like like the the success chance of a group how much of that is based on the tank alone especially at like a mid-tier key level i think is fucking insane it's it's so much more than every other role yeah that makes it fun for like good tanks that are like super high level and stuff but yeah just across the broad population there's not 20 percent of people interested in doing that is a lot less and what else but you i will got, say what this else season spit it about? feels like good feels like this season that tanks are a lot more abundant because of how there's a lot less things to worry about, whether it's the affixes or uh, the amount of tank busters. There's a lot less tank busters this patch. There's a lot of tank one tricks too, and aren't like all the tanks pretty good right now? Like they're like pretty solid, and then Guardian's gonna become like a fucking freak beast in point five, right? So like, I mm -hmm. feel like if you're a tank main, you can kind of just play your main in keys right now, and you're chilling. That's not always the case. I think uh, I, like I was looking at the the top, you know, like um mythic plus 20 and above on raider io and i feel like there is more variety in terms of everything like tanks healers dps than uh, like by miles more than there's ever been in any other season you could you could play like literally any class for any role that you want and there's some comp out there that you can perform well in i, I mean I, I think we saw that a lot last season too which is actually i think it's so i think it's so cool that we're able to really see something that is like that where we just have a more flexible meta and i think i think it makes mythic plus just a better game well this general, whenever yeah. the, more classes are able to participate paladin syndrome at the top with a, a tiny shave downwards would be would would yeah. be good to really do. i feel Probably like just way too useful that's the problem yeah. yeah it's it's their utility though i feel like their defensiveness and damage thing got put right where it needs to be compared to other tanks in my opinion yeah. it's just that well, they, I mean, right they now have... demon hunter is insane I don't yeah know if you guys have it, seen vengeance dude, paladins just have so much sauce enough. man they have so much stuff yeah 
like right now, basically the way it works is for tanks, you have Vengeance that does a lot more damage and arguably more tanky than Paladin, but it's so much safer having a Paladin in your group. Like it's night and day, especially if you're pugging. Getting sack, man. Just getting the yeah. one minute sack, sack is, is so the sick. most imbalanced shit. It is fucking insane. It is so so, so broken. Too. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, one thing I I want to say too. If you guys look back at like BFA and Legion, definitely, and Shadowlands, all three, the Mythic Plus metas in those uh, expansions and in any individual season are so much more specific than the first two seasons of Dragonflight have been, especially near the end of season one and like the beginning of season two. But the perception, especially surrounding the MDI, is always like you could only run this specific comp. And a lot of that is like the selection bias and how people can run their keys. You know, if you just list a 20 under route right now, you can run the exact comp you want. You don't have to make any concessions. So a lot of people don't even really see a lot of the other classes in the game to even know if they're good. My only question is, now that the game is obviously significantly, significantly, like two to three times better balanced than it's ever been, do you, does that selection bias still feel that way? Even if you're like a really top tier spec, you maybe aren't the like de facto like community thinks it's exactly these three DPS, but like realistically, there's like six, seven, or eight classes you could pick from. Like, Yo, do so you it's feel actually weird? Really weird with that at the moment. Right now, people have this idea that Red Pound is the most broken shit, but it's literally Wait, not really? even. Yeah, it's, so many people have that conception. And right now, Red Pound is like extremely popular. Like, I'm sure if you ask Twitch chat, everyone's like. Oh, red Paladin, yeah, class is I mean, if you look at like number of runs done, red is just being spammed right now. It's like a really popular class. Yeah. The issue with it's red, red is going to get outdone by other classes at the top just because it has to make concessions for single target and AOE. They're goaded AOE class, but like there are classes who do close or as much and they just do single target at the same time, like Evoker well, so and Shadow Priest. I think what makes Red Paladin so interesting right now specifically is that it's a very, very simple and easy class to play and you can just dish out all your damage. And fun. It's yeah, super, fun. super so, like, fun, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to gravitate towards looking OP just because players at that lower level can perform like maybe 90% of how effective the class can be, whereas if they're playing a mage, they're probably only doing like 70% of what they should be doing. Mm, true. And they're also unkillable. Like insanely yeah, unkillable. unkillable. Yeah, if, if anything, I actually think the only balance change they should make in terms of, like, which DPS classes are good is to, like, Shadow Priest, and it's not even by nerfing the spec. It's just, like, yeah. how good Mass Dispel is in some of these encounters is too much, I, I think. I don't even think it's just, like, some of these encounters. It's, like, some of these dungeons. Yeah, the dun man. dungeons. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the, old, you're old going to Hall's Infusion or Old Man without, without yeah. one of those, now, it's just misery. I understand I'm getting close. I, I am dangerously boarding on the edge of getting a monologue here, but the another thing with Priest 2... <laughs> is it's with how well that class is made now as far as like how it does damage and the talents that it gets it is so hard to actually balance them when you can pair them with a class that gets a ton of value out of their pi right like it's just so that, fucking hard i i yeah i, I agree with Jonas. i don't think their issue is their damage though like they are one of the best dps on their own merits plus they bring power right, which is great the, like yeah like that them. is it, it's like an acceptable level too there is certainly an issue whenever mass dispel is mandatory in for in most dungeons so, okay i'm gonna give you a different monologue why the fuck does the spell still have a cooldown why did they ever put a cooldown on dispel it's this is there's not uh, you know there's a lot of thing. instances of pvp it's right of too. PvPers being mad that pve fucks something up for them but this is an issue of pve getting fucked up by pvp there's no fucking reason why Dispel should have a cooldown, we should be able to just spam them, and mana should be the drawback. Actually, that's kind of a good cook. Because, like, mana is so frequently not an issue, but if there was hard Dispel situations and Dispel didn't have a cooldown, you would just, mana would become a relevant resource as well. That, actually, I kind of fuck with that. Why is, yeah, mana, why is mana a fake resource, JV? Oh, here we go. It's because... <laughs> I can't, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come off as BM if I go through the whole thing. So <laughs> never mind. I can't even say this in a sarcastic way without it getting clipped. So are we're you, just... you going to say that you're going to say it's a resource for shitty people or shitty players? Well, I, you know, I'm oh, not going to say about it, to but anger you can say it for me. He's going to anger the civilians that's, for sure. Just let it out. Cool. Just let it out, man. Yeah, I mean, I think that matters, you know, like the skill of being able to manage your mana properly. I think that's important. Yeah, imagine the negative gameplay you would have for like everyone else if... 
Like it became something where you were where bones. healers were just drinking in between literally every pull and slowing the game down at like lower key levels. That would also be pretty tragic. Oh right? no, that'd be awful. <laughs> Anything else you guys wanna wanna spit about? Anything on your mind? I think we covered most of it. I guess like one more thing talking about like the whole community presumption thing. Like people don't even know that devastation is op currently because yeah, no one plays it wow okay i didn't know yeah. that yeah Holy fuck. somebody came in here with an agenda <laughs> what did they say? Look, i just want to talk about devastation evoker for a second i mean i feel like if you've been paying attention to the game you know that they're op i think there's like some hesitancy to think that they're good at mythic plus because like in season one they were doing like pretty good damage but like people were like nah they're just not there yet but yeah i mean that class is straight up insane <laughs> so I mean, it's definitely, and it's also, I'm fairly certain this is true. It's the best AOE PI in the game, at least for conventional two minute use buttons. Like there's a couple of better single target PIs, two of them, but like it's the best AOE PI and Shadow Priest is also sick in dungeon. So it's like that, that is like a one, two DPS combo is kind of insane. There, there, there's definitely a question as to, is the DPS meta going to be rigid with Shadow Priest and Devastation Evoker? Yeah. Cause there is kind of yeah, no better partner. What's the other, what's the other, like, if you guys had to pick a third class right now, you have the best players in the world at every single spec, and you could make your own team, and you have a Shadow Priest and a Devastation Evoker. What does the rest of the comp look like? Well, Boomkin's insane right now, too, so... I watched... I think that's a, gonna be like hard. Fire Mage isn't a, bad, either. I watched an Arcane Mage and a Shadow Priest. The Arcane Mage did as much boss damage on every boss in Nelf Slayer as the Shadow Priest and the Rep Paladin put together. Would, Dorky, would you ever bring a, would you ever bring a Havoc Demon Hunter? If, no. if you're playing, like, I mean, Havoc is damage. Is like you'd play worse. Vengeance, right? Just because your whole comp uh, is Vengeance? I think yeah. you'd play Vengeance. Also, do, okay. uh, the thing with Arcane, by the way, have the slot for it. Arcane is very player dependent. There, there are a very small amount of people in the world that could play Arcane at, like, the very highest level and the highest keys like you're talking about. It is a very, yeah, I think very niche spec. It's a wizard meta. It's a, it's a wizard meta for sure. That's the first time. When was the last time it was a full wizard meta? Has that ever happened? There's been range really? metas, but it's usually like hunter. Remember there's there's like there's, like there's like always like a windwalker or yeah. rogue though. Last last season, a legion had a pretty strong range meta, but even then, windwalker just can't and, get away with sub rogue are both broken. Yeah, the the prop paladin wrestler sham and kick support is so good. Yeah, I still think enhance is probably. I mean, there's just like probably like is there like almost ten DPS specs that are like really fucking good. Yeah. Where you're like, if, yes. if you oh, wanted to really? push like super, super high keys, you could pick like a million different specs. For sure, Ellie is also really good. Ellie is good. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's so much shit that you can play this season. I it, I think the third DPS slot's going to be pretty up in the air for a while. Yeah. It may never get figured out. I mean, it's possible you could go to the TGP and. Well, I mean, see I mean last comps. season it wasn't really figured out either. Like, what would you guys say last season meta was? I wouldn't have said that. I mean, Resto Shaman and Prop Pally and then something. I mean, really? Resto Shaman? I feel like sh this priest was better than Resto Shaman. Mm. And, like, for DPS, too. Like, what would you even say was good? Well, just the number of classes, like, the number of comps you could make without a Bloodlust as, as one of your DPS. There was, like, some I mean, last legit... season, people had a uh, Mage or Enhancement Shaman as Lust. I don't think you needed a Resto Shaman. No, but I... Thought, like, I... Resto Shaman was not as good as Priest. Yeah, maybe. Maybe by the end of it. What do you all... Uh, yeah, that's why it's like really hard to say. What do you all think about this raid in general? Like just boss oh, quality, bangs. doing the raid, anything? I, I like Absolutely the raid. Bangs. I find the raid quite well, fun. Actually, except I did Nelfarian last night, and god damn, that fight blows. Yeah. But aside from that... Dude, Nelfarian... Nelfarian, Magmarax, and Zaskar, and all have fatal flaws. Nelfarian... Neltharian is a banger. It's just Volcanic Heart. Like Volcanic Heart alone, that just that singular mechanic makes that fight weird. I mean, that's like the entire fight. Like, it was just like, go to your spot. Yeah, and then, it's super like, annoying. That's they, it. They need to make that's that shit 20 way. yards pronto. They would make the fight so much better. It wouldn't even make it that much harder because, like, the way you're wiping right now is like cringe difficulty. It's like, oh, one person didn't make it exactly to their spot and there wasn't one inch of a safe spot, so we all died. It's just like the least fun way to wipe. And then the private aura thing. They just, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, the, the, dude, the, I... the one boss, they decide to do private auras on like big time. And then that's also the most like memeable fucking like private aura doing this list thing. And then there's also just a map in the last phase. That's sick. Okay, dude, I, I, got, I got some takes on fucking weak auras and private auras. They can't, okay, I do not think that private auras can exist. I, I think that if they're going to do anything, they're going to have to just completely integrate weak auras into the game and, and delete like Disagree. how weak auras function. And, and I think that private auras are so bad 
I think you can do private, like, okay, consider Blasphemy on Anduin. I feel like that is a good candidate mechanic to Private Aura. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at a mechanic like that, or even maybe a little bit dissimilar. True. But that was one where, like, Echo spaceship UI'd it, right, with a weak aura. Oh, we never And, like, did. Liquid and a lot of other guilds YOLO'd it, right? Yeah. And if you were Blizzard and you're like, we want this mechanic to be YOLO'd, or we want a mechanic like this to be YOLO'd, I think Private Auraing a mechanic like that will, will accomplish that. But something like Volcanic Heart, no, that that's clearly a mechanic that requires weak aura level precision well, and planning. Yeah, so if exactly. you make us do that with our with our brain cells instead of a weak aura, that just is our brain doing a stupid job that a computer should do. So a couple of people in chat are asking, and Dorky wanted to clarify like what a private aura is. So basically, you, have you guys ever gotten a mechanic in this game and it's like, go back left with this or go right, and you have a weak aura that basically just tells you like where you are supposed to place this thing? So Blizzard put something in the raid this tier where a few, I think it was three total mechanics, like they made it because they did not want you doing that. So they basically made add-ons unable to tell that you have this debuff and like it's only showed on like just the regular in-game UI, like on your raid frames and stuff like that. And so you can't make weak ores for it. This is made to combat like weak ores basically solving the whole game. The idea behind private ores, by the way, is fine. I think everyone agrees that like, it's just more fun to YOLO mechanics than it is to just have them assigned and shit. Like that's just yeah. good. Uh, but this volcanic heart was very similar to like p1 jailer bombs i would actually say they're like almost the exact same difficulty and almost the exact same mechanic uh, as far as how you handle it That's and true. both of those would be almost impossible without some kind of weak aura so it's kind of insane that they develop like the whole thing for a while was people were saying oh well you know they make these mechanics because you have weak auras and there it's an arms race and they have to fight it's like but that's not true with this weak aura they made or with this mechanic they made they made like an impossibly difficult mechanic. Bro, if you didn't have any system to deal with that, like that weird list thing, you uh, you would wipe to that fucking forever. It would be so, it would be, the, it would be the most annoying mechanic of all time. Dude, I mean, the healing check on that fight is rather low. I'm pretty sure they expected you to break a bunch of walls. Yeah, that, that is how they expected you to do it. Yeah, they wanted you to break walls in P2, which is like how you would handle it. But also, I think there's one simple thing. I think Dratna's exactly right. There's certain mechanics like Blasphemy where like you, there's no need for a spaceship weak or a, you just YOLO it. This fight... If they give you volcanic bombs and they or they give you jailer bombs in P1, you can make it a private aura. There would be no reason to use a list thing if they gave you some kind of indication over your debuff and it had some kind of symbol or number to where you can kind of assign those on your own. Like one goes here. If you get the weird little upside down triangle, you go to this corner kind of thing where it's like all in game and more visual in game. You don't need to actually have weak auras solve those kind of things for you. Um, one thing I appreciate about this tier, like the raid in general, is that you guys finished the race so fast that your weak aura package was out week one, and I would like you to do that every tier. Yeah. Well, in fact, if you could just release that before you're done with the tier, like I won't share it with Echo, I promise. Um, <laughs> and it just it's uh it's better than like big wigs, you know. Especially with the new anchor shit, like it's just that's the future of raid shit, and it's unfortunate that it's locked behind guilds that are progging stuff. That should just be. This should be. I mean, there 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 are really good public weak auras, like really good. Like in fact, the person who used to make our weak auras for years, reload, just like uploads all of the weak auras we normally make. Like there's some like hyper specialized one, but I think wouldn't the take be that you can progress a mythic boss normally and not need something like that? Like, isn't that... Yeah, I was about to say, like, the real problem is, like, why the hell do we need this shit? I mean, like, the fact that we need it is actually fucking annoying. Yeah, that's kind of the point. But, I mean, yeah, you said that you guys liked it. I, I'm, I'm surprised, like, I mean, when Dratnos and I went back and we did, like, a stream reviewing our, like, pre-raid, we did, like, a tier list of the boss's design, basically, and then we went back and looked at, like, where those actually ended up. And comparing that to Vault is, like... The overall boss quality in this raid is like way higher than Vault. Vault Vault actually had a lot of stinkers. It's so my I, favorite raid since Legion. Yeah. Do you think that they can make bosses that have like do you think they can make a good ad fight ever? I think Broodkeeper is probably as good as you're gonna get. Like I, I like Broodkeeper should have never been the second to last boss because I think there's a cap on how good like ad fights are and can be. But Broodkeeper was like about as good as you're gonna get. Like I, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to make a second to last boss that's like focused on killing ads and it's gonna be like a fucking banger. That's just not how this game works. Here's what they need to do: put those motherfuckers on like the first five bosses in the raid, and then it's all good. You can make a stinky ass ad fight, all good. You just kill it real yeah, quick. Assault like, Zikali, yeah, it's fine. Assault of the Kali, yeah. yeah, that's fine, dude. Assault of the Kali owns. Who cares? You just fucking I'm, go I'm in there and you just fucking you just assault. blast that boss yeah. and get out of there. All good. Yeah, I just want to do big do big damn and get loot.
Like if Assault that. didn't have a boss frame that popped up, I would have just thought it was trash. Yeah. Guy, all, all I'm I mean, saying, all I'm saying is Broodkeeper being the second boss in the raid and Taros being the second to last boss somehow, or or, mm. or a better Kurog would have been I, fucking insane. I think that some of the best fights, like, dude, why is it that all of the best fights are like single target burn <laughs> fights? That's why? because that's that's what the Blizzard cooks up single target fights real good. They're insane at it. They have never been able to like figure out how to make an amazingly good ad fight really. Like, if you look back at all the best, like, end bosses, second to last bosses, the ones where, like, you're fighting one main guy is, like, the main thing, like, it's, it, it's always good. Now, then Magmarax happened, so, but I think that's a, that's a bit of an anomaly, because, like, within the same raid that they made Magmarax, and obviously they've made, like, Sludge Fist in the past, like, Rashok is genuinely, like, Rashok might be the best, like, single target mid-tier boss they've ever made, like, better than Sludge Fist. Like, Rashok was fucking incredible. Yeah, I hope they continue making raids like this. God, this would be sick. And keep the loot system this way. Oh, my God. Yeah, I make I've it been, easy to get loot. My, I've been happy with this tier. My hunch is, and this is no inside information. I have not heard a single thing about this. I feel like they're going to tone down the amount of loot you get a little bit. I think. Oh, no. I think I they can do that, that and it will still be great. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I think, I think that there is a lot of loot that players get right now. Because, like, the reason why is... Then there's only one reason why. Like, they've been listening to players. Like, people are giving them really positive feedback. It's just because the big swing... I don't think they... It was, the, this, the loot system was so in-depth that, like, I don't think they knew we were going to get this gear this fast. I they, Like, I, I, you would assume they did. But, like, I feel like if they could go... If they would go back, they would do this, but slow it down just, like, a little bit. I think they would do that. Just because it was so different from before. But I... I, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I want Blizzard to know, just in case they are considering this, slowing down the loot, I want them to know that, that JP I, has loot. I will fucking screech. Like, just know <laughs> that this reaction is coming from me. If you we slow down the loot train at all, I will, I will rage for weeks on Twitter. Oh, it will man. be Not Twitter. shit and piss everywhere. If even just a li if I get even the hint that we're slowing down loot. All right. So I, to be real though, you that's kind of your whole bit though, right? Like I feel like there might be more shitting and pissing, but I feel like that's kind of what happens anyway. But it could be like in other directions. Like if you are in charge of loot at Blizzard, know that if you slow this down, the shit and piss will be aimed your direction. <laughs> you can by simply not slowing it down direct the shit and piss at a different designer. True, it true. It will be their nightmare to deal with. Yeah, you Let's guys are go. doing great. Keep up. Keep it up. <laughs> Don't slow it down. Dude, you know what I'm kind of excited about? Like, if you're playing a class right now, if you get shown on one of these, like, uh, 0.1.5 or 0.1.7 uh, PTR notes where it's like, oh, there's, like, three paragraphs about our class that they're changing that's actually like some of the most transformative class changes they've made in a while. Like the, like they yeah. just did like rep paladin. They're doing guardian druid and those changes look insane. Uh, like the, like the actual full reworks. It looks like they're targeting mage right now with that. They're fucking spitting with those. Like they are really doing well. So like, I'm, I'm interested and they're doing so much of it too. Like by the end of the expansion, man, I would just be so happy. Like, it seems like they're just, they, it shows clearly that they get it on what makes classes fun and not, uh when they're making those changes so a lot a lot of upside a lot a lot better than like how some of the talent trees were at like the beginning of the expansion well what's what's interesting about that is that it used to be that you would get mad if you thought your class was being addressed mid like mid <laughs> it's patch true because because that was never the good that was always the like oh we'll just throw him a bone to get him to shut up for a little bit and any major meaningful rework you knew that was going to occur between expansions so if your class got addressed in like a point one patch you were like god damn it man we're gonna get fake bullshit but now we've actually seen yeah a series of like three or four class reworks that you're like wow that's actually the Dude. kind of stuff you'd expect between expansions this is this is like what you know this like tells you everything about chat like everyone in chat's reading about demo and none of them realize that they made a post like two hours ago that walked back all of that shadow bolt yeah obviously that was not <laughs> gonna make it to live yeah like obviously that was never gonna make it to live like if you if you look at like people massively complaining about something like that it, it, it you know they see that shit but yeah the uh yeah 
Rogue, Rogue hasn't been changed in 10 years. All good. That's going to be coming up soon for sure. They don't, they don't need the, it. The real question is, how the fuck have they not changed Bloody K or Vengeance? Like, the tree, they made Boomkins able to get Solar Beam, but we still can't get Sigil of Chains, still can't get Mass Grip. What the fuck, man? Are you, are you identifying as a Vengeance Demon Hunter main now? Dude, Vengeance uh, is so fun. Class may or may not be OP. Vengeance no is really good. Are you doing TGP this patch, Dork? Uh, I plan to, yeah. Jeb, are you doing it? Man, I, I gotta find people. Nobody wants to bring the 38-year-old to fucking organize oh, damn, sporting 38. events. 38? <laughs> organize sporting events? Dude, aren't you supposed to be there in, like, the lawn chair to the side? Yeah, we'll see. Dude, I think, I think, I'm not positive, but I think, I think uh, a team from our guild might play. Oh, shit. Not positive. <laughs> They, we, 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 uh, we've got JPC we've got group. some boys yeah we've got some boys that are slamming keys at the moment and they're having fun holy fuck i saw y them play yeah yips is playing with them so that'll be a group yo is it a thing to have bloody cape permanently be bad at damage why can't why we make that, that why class is that their bit <laughs> what the hell did we wait or we're just going to agree that like fucking gavel didn't exist no, but, but I mean, that's because of Gavel, you know, like the class itself has never once outside of damage. Gavel, Blood DK outside has been of, like, like the worst or the second worst tank DPS in all situations for like five years. Yeah, like they literally rely on having like permanent dancing room weapon and shit to do damage. But like outside of that, the class just innately doesn't do damage. Melee is always their highest damage or like fucking death strike, a single target ability. If they're still paying ridiculous. for they're still paying for Bone Storm. They're paying for Legion Bone Storm, and they've never been forgiven <laughs> for that shit. I mean, but like Legion Bone Storm wasn't even that good. Like I, I, I guarantee, if you bring back Legion Bone Storm, it's still gonna be dog shit. Because I mean, like you're pulling five mobs at a time, anyways, right? Like, why does it matter if it's uncapped? I got a chat question here. So, you guys know there's like an accessibility problem in Mythic Raid right now, right? With like the requiring twenty people and the Mythic lockout is the way it is, and no cross realm yeah. from the start of the patch and stuff. Uh, if they decide to not make any changes there, would you guys see a solution to that uh, accessibility problem being uh, 10 man's next expansion? 10 player mythic? Oh, mm -hmm. dude, 10 man would be so sick. I, I think I that only one difficulty enjoyer. can exist in this game. In addition to 20 man? Or no, just no, no, that no, it like, becomes a new 20 No, man. like mythic, the hardest difficulty in the game is 10 man. Uh, I'd, I don't be, think I'd, I'd be down for it. I in would fact, be down, I'd be... but I what don't if you think they would step ever further do it. And made it five, man. <laughs> uh, now you're cooking. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, I, I think there's there's the 10-man rating instead of 20-man would majorly harm the integrity of what makes Mythic uh, rating good, like, big time. It would be, it would the content would be much worse, but I wonder if the accessibility would make up for that. I, I well, would, but, like, I why would, would it be prefer, worse, though? I would prefer the smaller group size, but I, I do think that, like, killing off all 20 like all 20 man rating seems bad as a as a result. The one thing I will what? say about 10 man versus 20 man in favor of 20 man is one of the issues with like five with like mythic plus is that it becomes if if one class is good then if and you can only bring 5 of of the classes then every 5 man group just becomes the same version of each other. And with 20 man raids you start fleshing out you start getting opportunities for classes that if it, if you were just you know going by top five they don't get in there but you bring the sixth seventh eighth ninth person you start opening up some more spots then you start talking about the 17th 18th 19th person in the raid and you start getting opportunities for specs and classes that wouldn't exist in a smaller raid group like raid buffs will be absolutely awful well i mean is it wouldn't it be the same as m plus in a way where like you're just going to pick out specific comps there's 10 raid buffs, aren't there? I feel like with 10, yeah, you it would be like, oh... But you're, you're not going to want all of them. No, dog, that's... Uh, I'm sure you really Chat, that wasn't a poop. Would that was really a that was a throw-up. That's something that one of my Danes ate and threw up. I don't know what the fuck it was. It's twice as good as it is in in M+, right? Like, in relative to the slot, if in 10 people. Like, it's more than enough to... It, unless you're playing no warriors, no... Like, no... no well, but, like, but that's what I'm saying, though. Like, 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 if you had one of everything, right? Wouldn't... The Mystic Touch just was it poop that it threw up? No, it wasn't poop. I don't know, you know what it was. I haven't looked at it yet. In your comp. It was not poop. I mean, it would still, it not... I think, be worth yep. bending over quite a it's bit for. Yeah. Not like as mm, much. I'm I mean, not even sure if that's entirely true. Maybe, maybe. Mystic Touch is, is a, a weaker example as well than like AI and Chaos Brand. Like those, yeah, those yeah, yeah. giga required slots that are still going to take up most of your 10, right? You have Arcane Intellect, Powered Fortitude. 
Chaos Brand. But like personally, I feel like that's more of a class buff issue. Paladin, Paladin, Paladin. Raid yeah, size the, issue. The, both of the Paladins. The uh, probably the Rogue as well. I think it would just be harder for them to design good fights. Like the the thing that's good about WoW right now is there's a lot of different specs. There's 38 specs in the game, about to be 39. A lot of them do very different things. Uh, and by dropping that down to 10, fights would just look a lot more homogenized and raid comps would look a lot of the same all the time. You'd have like almost no representation of everything. And I think the fights in yeah. general could not be made as well as they're made right now, like, or even close. I, I think it would be cool though to like have uh, like 10 man be the raid size, but I don't think with like the current state of the game, it makes sense. I think that five man is the correct group size for like mythic plus content and then for raids. Yeah, I think, I think 20 is the correct size, but it does suck for players who, you know, there's always going to be a cycle of guilds that struggle to fill out 20 people for the raid. Well, man, I've, I've felt this way for a while. I felt like they needed to, I see no reason why cross realm isn't available from day one. Cause like, there's a lot of like groups right now that would want to kill Kazara and like Sigali yeah. and like half of those groups are formed because that is a thing. And then also I just, I don't understand why the mythic lockout is like, I, I think the only people who would be potentially negatively affected by the mythic lockout being like the heroic one would be like the race world first. Like we would do cringe shit. Like we do like cringe, like mythic splits and fucking just weird shit. But also like they should never make the game for us or worry about us ever. Right. They should make it for everyone else. True. It would just, it would just be, so, it would just be so much better for everyone else. I mean, I think, I think that like, like you were saying cross realm and, and honestly realms in general, I think are so archaic. And yeah. like, I, I don't it see, I don't see any, any you. Yeah. Realms don't make any sense. There's like, I mean, it should uh, just be there's... one fucking Omega server. Holy fuck. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think, uh, yeah, well, why why wouldn't there be an Omega? I mean, I guess they would just probably have like, you could just add shards though, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they yeah. would just be charted, like, you, but it's just one, one Omega server that gets charted. So, okay, so... but what's the best server name? It doesn't have to have a server name. It could just be called World of Warcraft. Fuck, it has to have a server. What? Yes, it has to have a server <laughs> name. <laughs> why? Why? Uh, let's see. The best server name. At that point, wouldn't you just Azeroth. merge? Wouldn't you merge regions too? Wouldn't you allow like US and EU to queue on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just have like just be like I... fucking Dota two. You just queue up. I think I think that, I think that you need to make sure that players understand what they're doing though. If they're okay, which I think that with NA being merged with OS, it it's not abundantly clear sometimes if you're accidentally queuing to somebody unless you realize that they're on Frostmourne. Oh, but yeah, I mean, exactly. Can't you just like. Now, people are saying that would be horrible. Like, you're not forced to play with bad ping. Like, right now, if you're playing on NA servers and you see, Bro, like, you, a, know what it's you like, see what a Frostmourne... You yeah, you see what Frostmourne is. You're like, okay, I'm not going to join that group because I don't want 200 ping. You would just, like, not queue up with... Uh... Or it could not even be that, like, you'd have to, like, make a character on each, but, like, they're both, like, the same thing. Like, you would have to, like, pick Europe and America at the top instead of Realms or whatever other regions, right? You wouldn't be forced to play with bad ping. There would be servers near your house or whatever. Yeah, you would just be like sharded to an Oceanic server or an EU server. And if you choose to play with NA, you could choose to, but you're not required to. Yeah, literally how it works right now for OC and NA being on opposite sides of the world, but still able to play together. Yeah, also not to mention that playing from EU to NA is like even like the farthest east of Western Europe, that's like 120 ping at the most. Yeah, it's not. It's not it bad. It's not bad at all. Like yeah. you guys did it for Eternal Palace. Yeah, we literally race raced. Yeah, we yeah. raced for the world first uh, in London, playing from NA servers, and it was fine. Uh, you guys, any you guys, anything else you want to get off your chest before we dip? This was good. This was. I'm, I'm assuming chat found this pretty interesting. I think this was. Um, uh, yeah, balance healer damage, please. Ooh, actually, Lamal. fucking okay. He's exactly right though. Like they. There's like a there's like a couple healers in raid that do like pretty similar damage, like a little bit over twenty K, around thirty K. And then like some healers do like no damage while healing, but they do crazy damage if you do it all the time. So I think that's fine with variety. And then they just nerfed Nature's Vigil in half. And like Resto Druid had very balanced, not OP raid DPS as like a healer, and then now that's just like half as much as it was, which for no reason. I mean Vigil needed to be nerfed, but uh not not for resto druid not damage. for resto druid <laughs> yeah it should it yeah. should have been nerfed for off healing it should not have been nerfed for the other way it works i mean didn't they say in one of the dev interviews that healer damage is supposed to be like part of their kit or like utility i you guys remember I that mean, 
I think that, and, I think that please, some things in I mean, the game healers, are, healers are already like super <laughs> balanced. It's just, I don't think it's like super hard in any direction. Uh, yeah, I mean the damage is a pretty some bad outlier at the moment for him. Some things deserve to be homogenized. Wait, what's the what's note. the damage? Drums. What's the damage? Buff drums. Who who's owning a mythic plus right now? Is it Resto Shaman? For damage, you. That's so funny because like in raid, it's the opposite. It's I mean they're fine in raid, but like they're also the healer that's gonna like like they're like one of the lowest raid DPS healers in raid like assuming you're healing yeah, a hard they fight have to the be whole time actively yeah. damaging Ooh, make drums real lust please Br I bring beg. it back to 25 yeah, yeah. why yeah. was it why was it bring ever drums and ng res they don't have to be as good as the real thing but bring them closer yeah i mean they I literally think, had this before like in bfa every single scroll was just not the real thing but close and then they nerfed every single one of them or removed them well, the scrolls were kind of cringe. <laughs> like, admittedly, I will, I will agree. I think the scrolls are kind of annoying. Look, they won't admit it, but it's because Blizzard wants to treat Lust as your as your raid buff. That's what it's supposed to be. Like, if you look at all of the Lust classes, like, they all, aside from Mage, God bless them, um, they all have a lack of raid buff, and that's because Lust is their raid buff. Oh, but Blessing of the Bronze, JB. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, man. Blessing of the Bronze. I actually don't even track that with a weak aura because it doesn't matter if you have it or not. All right, I'm gonna head out, boys. It was a, it was a good spit. We'll do this more GGs. often. Are you guys playing Diablo? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Dude, I wonder what's gonna happen to the to the WoW scene in like those two weeks. I I don't know. Gosh I don't. He's gonna be dead. I feel like our whole guild is playing uh is playing D4. I can tell you what's gonna happen. People are gonna farm the the phrase "world first" while everybody's gone. Like you're gonna wait for the fuck off to Diablo, and then when every when all of forms of competition are gone, then you're gonna put world first fill in the blank in your title if you're still playing WoW, and you're gonna farm that for like two weeks. Bro, until, I haven't done that for like back. a week. Or at least no, like days. world first plus twenty three no yeah. evoker. Oh, I see lot. for keys. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. See. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I should do that in my Diablo title. World first WoW guy does Diablo thing. I'd probably get a few extra gift of subbies. All right. That's I'll, a good uh, idea. I, right. I will, I will uh, see you guys right. later. Yeah, good chat. See you guys. Yep. All right. See later. You.